Okay, so let's. So do you want to call it to a specific time? Sure. Um, it is that clock is wrong. It is six thirty-seven, um, and this is a gathering of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so on our agenda today, we have um, call to order announcements. Um, we're going to table minutes because we don't have quorum, public comment, member reports, the action and discussion items, which I'm imagining we might not get through all of tonight. Um, but there is Cress and DEI updates, Rob and Youth Empowerment Center update, police chief and Cress director update, the restorative justice and other budget cuts at the regional schools, civil rights complaints, co-responder and police activities in schools, holding future town forums and a town council liaison. And then more public comment and then upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules and other topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. <clears throat> So that is the agenda. Hi, Pamela. Um, Hi, so Pam. we, Everold is having some Wi-Fi issues. Lucette is not able to come today and I haven't heard from Isabella. Um, so we understand we can still meet and listen, but we can't vote on anything today because we don't have quorum at this time. Well, meet, listen, and discuss. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I will read, um, does anybody have any announcements? Um, I think we were talking about a couple of um, announcements actually, just kind of, you know, chit chatting before. Um, so I'll just say the, the announcements, which is one, um, this is my brother, my actual brother, <laughs> blood brother, uh, Tem Blessed um, is a stage name, but Tem Ferreira, He'll be um, uh, performing at the Drake. And as, as you all know, he's a hip hop artist and does a lot of um, good work as an educator in Amherst uh, with Amherst schools and um, other organizations within Amherst. Um, and he'll be performing on March 22nd at the Drake. So hopefully uh, folks will come out and support. Um, then I know that um, the Cape Verdean Student uh, Alliance organization from UMass, they're having their Cape Verdean Cultural Night on March 30th. Um, and that starts, I believe, at like 6 o'clock or 6.30. Um, and it usually goes until about 10 or 11. And there's like a series of events and um, cultural events, food, music, um, um, some dancing, they're going to have a band, they're going to have like a drumming um, a circle. And then yours truly will be doing some poetry because I do some spoken words. So I'll be doing some poetry that night too. So um, hopefully folks can come out to that. Um, can I just ask a point of order question? It's Cape Verde Student Alliance. Is that what you said? Cape I'm sorry. Verdean, Cape Verdean Student Alliance is a student organization at UMass, and they're the ones okay. who are um, hosting this. Perfect. Thank I you. know I'm, I'm missing one announcement, but you can go ahead, Allegra, and then I'll see if I can remember my other announcement. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think I have anything. I think my brain is a little bit fried today. Um, I think I had one other thing, but we can keep going. And then if I remember it, I'll, I'll bring it up. So why don't we open up for public comment? Uh, sorry, I just hit the button and it disappeared. Um, oh, okay, now I remembered before we go into public comment. The other one was around the 80 acres uh, free store. Um, so that's the store in Amherst. So they have clothes, household items, toys, and more all for free. 
Um, their hours of operation are Tuesdays, 1.30 to 5.30, Wednesdays, 12 to 4.30, and last Sunday of the month, 3 to 6 p.m. They're at 284 North Pleasant Street, across from Kendrick Park in Amherst, okay? So for anyone, you know, lots of um, good things that they have there, and it's all absolutely free. Um, can you just repeat their hours again? So their hours, Tuesdays, 1.30 to 5.30 p.m. Then Wednesdays, 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And then the last Sunday of the month, 3 to 6 p.m. And they're also um, looking for volunteers. Uh, if people want to volunteer um, there, um, you know, just contact them, 80 Acres, um, and, and, and you can find out more information. comment. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on. Please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, um, residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. CSSJC will not engage in dialogue or comment on the matter raised during public comment. Yes, so I'm Martha Hanner. I live in South Amherst, District 5, and I just wanted to say that it's very exciting to hear the news that a new press director has been uh, now chosen and hope that tonight in this meeting that we'll learn a little bit more about her. So uh, I'm eager to hear the, the news and uh, very excited that we're able to move forward. So thank you. Thank you, Martha. Anybody else? There will be another public comment period at the end of the meeting. Not seeing hands, so I will move along. Um, any member reports? Um, you know, just want to say that I attended the Judy Brooks conversation um, earlier in the month. Uh, oh, maybe was it the end of the month? I forget when it was, but it was a very good uh, session. It was brought on by the League of Women Voters, um, the um, Equity Justice uh, Committee, and it was on the Black Business um, of the Amherst area, uh, Black Business Association of the Amherst area. And they had a variety of um, Black business owners. And they provided a lot of really great information and how they got started in terms of their businesses. Uh, and obviously, all the hard work that it took um, for Black businesses to be able to establish themselves uh, within um, the Amherst uh, community, which, of course, you know has its challenges, um, especially around um, being a, a Black business owner and a person of color. Um, but I thought it was really um, well done in terms of the presentation, um, as well as provided really critical information. Um, so I wanted to um, thank Mrs. Ms. Pat Onani Baku um, and others uh, from that group that continue to do the work that sometimes is very thank thankless, but of course that we need um, to see. I know for my kids, it's wonderful that they're there, that they see these role models in their community um, and that they can can see, and I'm sure other young people can see, um, that they can also do it if if these folks are able to do it and have their their um, their business in, in our community. I think some of the other things we'll kind of talk about it when the agenda items come up. Um, so I'm looking at our action and discussion items. I'm wondering if we want to put the Crest director update first and then talk about what Crest has been doing. Um, is that okay with people? Yeah. Um, okay. 
<clears throat> so there is a new appointee for the position of Crest Director. Um, her name is Camille. And I believe, is it Theronique? Am I saying that? No, correctly? no, it's Camille Theriac. That's Theriac. how that's Theriac. that's how you pronounce, pronounce her last name. Thank you. Um, and so she was formerly a firefighter in Holyoke, um, along with our Chief Nelson, yep. and then went to school to become a social worker. So she has spent the more recent part of her career um, doing clinical work um, with people with significant mental health and substance use issues, um, most recently in Holyoke as a member of the Program for Assertive Community Treatment, which is a really intensive kind of wraparound service provision model for people with um, usually Department of Mental Health clients. Um, so she will be starting in April. So on long on as... on the eighth, April April eighth, and the um the town council meeting to approve her appointment is the eighteenth. So this coming Monday. Right. Um, so she we met. It seems like forever ago now. But um, our first round of interviews was back in <clears throat> January. Um, and we had a really, I felt a really strong candidate pool and she definitely had a great energy in our meetings. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can work together to, you know, move Chris forward. And I'm excited to hear from the temporary leadership about the possibilities um, that they're putting forward in their kind of transition report so well um, yeah and so for me like before we hear about the because i'm also interested in finding out more about the transition um and and what is going to be happening as uh, we transition to the new director i'm also very excited about this new director um uh, Allegra and I, even previous to her appointment, already sent an email to uh, Paul Bachman, um, you know, had stating and, and requesting, communicating a, a request for us to meet with her um, so that we can have um, conversations um, while she's onboarded and, and once she's onboarded. Um, so we'll be looking forward to that. But I wanted to hear from the both of you in terms of, can you share a little bit more about her? Um, you know, I'm assuming you both met with her and everything, why you think, you know, she has the skills to, to lead Crest forward, especially in terms of the mission and, and the vision. And when I say that, the original mission, the vision of, of Crest. So um, I don't, I mean, I was, I did not participate in the, in the search at all. Uh, uh, I met her with the responders um, for an, probably an hour when the responders met with her. Um, I do know her and have known her for a long period of time, but I think the, the answers to your question are probably best, um, provided by the people who commit, who were, you know, part of that search process, which I was not a part of the search process. No, I, I will Pamela, I get that. I understand you want yes. to. That's not what I'm asking. I'm just asking, what's your take? What 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 do you think yeah. in terms of like I, I wasn't part of the search at all. Yeah. I, I don't know really anything about her besides the little blurb that I received. So as someone yeah. that obviously is CSSJC and of course cares tremendous tremendously for CSS uh, for a uh, crest and one of the original members of CSWG, I'm just interested in finding out more about her. So you did get a chance to talk to her. So, and you said you know her otherwise. So I just wanted yeah. to get a take. Yeah. Like, so take. I, I I think that uh, that given the fact that the press department, well, first let me say before I forget that uh, we're planning a public um, uh, reception for her. Uh, I have to, confirm the space, but it's likely to be Thursday, which I believe will be the 11th of April, the 11th of April in the afternoon. Um, I, I, pardon? No, I coughed. Sorry. Oh, okay. That's all right. So, um, so that, 
Um, so we are planning that public event. So um, so folks will have an opportunity to meet with her and talk to her. And and um, uh, in addition to that, I think when I think about what the what my personal opinion would be uh, a good for the department is someone who can help it become the third branch of public safety, which is what it's envisioned. Um, and so I think having that public safety background will be really helpful as far as um, aligning the department with the goals of a public safety branch and um, understanding how that branch needs to interact with both police and fire, which she would have had experience in in her previous job in Holyoke. And I'll just add, like, I've never worked with her. Um, I know her personally, um, but, you know, I have no experience about what her life was like at work or other than knowing that she was a firefighter and that she had the, um, you know, the clinical uh, background, which I think um, will also be helpful in um, helping the town meet its the overall goals for the Crest Department. Um, and um, meet some of the um, the manners that other departments like this are being utilized in, around the country. Like, I think it's a good combination of skills. Um, okay, thank you. What about um, for you, uh, Chief Nelson? Any anything that you can share in terms of your take on the? I think I think she's she's a great great choice. She 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 she. She was my choice from 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 the start. I've known her, Jesus, good God. Uh, <laughs> I've I've uh, I've known her almost probably now through the third third thirty years I think almost almost that that long. Uh, she came came to work work for us. She had been laid laid off from the Spring Spring Springfield fire 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 fire, fire department uh, right right after their academy academy. And a few few of those those re recruits came to work work at a whole whole a whole you know, fire, fire. So so she she worked worked for me when I was a uh, lieutenant captain and dead 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 deputy chief. Uh, hard work worker, smart, tenacious. I mean, she she was a sing 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 single mom, done great things with with her kids, bring her raising her kids. Uh, smart, good good fire for the fire for fire for the fighter. Uh, you know, she's been been through some trials and tri tri tribulations, and she used use use that to just grow grow strong strong stronger. Uh, she left she left the job you know for, for you know uh well i won't say why but you know but it was one it was the same thing where she didn't want to leave and but it was just it was better for her and health health wise but she she, she overcame that went went back 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 to school pursued a, another path, path passion and it got it got it got in this so 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 short she uh i forget the name of the pro 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 program in Mount Hole 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 Hole, but she she went Francis went there. Did, yeah. Thank thank you. Mm -hmm. Did 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 great great there, and since since then has done 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 really really good things. So I think she's got the right mix of of technical ex, 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 expertise and pra, 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 practical knowledge. She knows she knows what it's like to work in a public public safety say, say, safety aid agency and work with different public safety say, safety aid, aid, aid agencies. She was she 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 left left the job as a as a lieutenant tenant. So she knows how to she, she knows how how to manage people. She knows how to su supervise people. Uh, She'll she'll be good good for 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 the department for, for me because she's got one again one foot in the social service 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 realm one in in the uh, public public safety safe, safe, safety realm and she knows how the two can mix and mix mix well. Uh, and the other the other thing is she she's what what the, what the department department is going to need they're going to need need a lead leader, so someone that that can. 
you know, pull 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 a group together together, lead and lead, lead, lead them in the correct direction. Uh and thing thing that I that one thing that I that I've said in the past is she she can be a boss. You know, and that's when you know you you gotta be via depart our department head. She's gonna be she is she will, will be a depart or department head. She's gonna have some folks who are work working for her. And it's not all 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 always pee pee peaches and cream sometimes you got to be a boss and that's just just the way 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 it's just just the way it is i think she brings a right bound bound but balance the right experience uh the right tem 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 temperament as well i mean you work you know when you work and live with some some someone as we do doing a fire 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 firehouse you can you don't you're not you're not going to hide much in term terms of who 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 you are and what and what you're all about, and she's the real deal. Uh, she she'll be good. She'll be good for the department. Department. She'll be good for the the, the responders. 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 She'll be good for the town. You know. So I'm 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 excited 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 for. Her. I'm happy. I'm happy for 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 for. for her. As I said, I've known I've known her a long long time. So so mm-hmm. that's uh that's my take. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, and that was like what Allegra had kind of posed before, which I'm interested too. Just kind of like what the transition process is going to be um, until she she starts. I know you all had mentioned some type of report that you all were putting together. Um, so yeah, you can get some information on that. Yeah. So we're still putting together the report. Um, I um, would describe it as um, a working bible. For so it has, I I didn't think to bring a list of all the sections, but there uh, there's it's divided into sections. So there's a section on um, on dispatch. There's a section on departments uh, relationships with other departments. There's a section on the uh, memorandums of understanding with the department. There's a section on personnel. Mm-hmm. Um, we during the last um, I guess four or five months have put together a an operations manual that um, she'll have. There's some other policies that the the team has put together. So all of that will be in a binder set um, for her for easy access, right? Rather than um, so she could flip to it and 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 have like a quick sort of overview. So with each within each section, there's going to be like you know, a cover plate that just gives a little uh, bit of an overview about that information. Um, a section on Qualtrics, so the software data collection system. Um, and it's still a work in progress. We're still um, putting it together and adding additional pieces. I thought it would be a good idea uh, to include a copy of the case studies that we l- use for training as well as the other sort of information about the training program that the new responders went through. So, you know, as I, as I would describe it as sort of a working Bible, like, you know, here's um, one place where you could go to get a quick sort of overview of various aspects of the operations of the department. Um, and of course, the plan is for, uh, for, for the trans for the interim leadership team to to step away like april 8th will be probably the ha- happiest day of my life in the last two two years i plan on wearing bright colors because i've been wearing gray for six months like so when i you know show up in purple or red or something it's it's because i've been wearing gray for six months um uh we haven't really talked the, the leadership team has not been able to be together at um I, I think since the last meeting, people have been on vacation. Uh, Kat was away on vacation and um, Janet is currently away on vacation. Uh, so we haven't ironed out, ironed out all of the transitional plans, but you know, obviously I will be right next door and um, there will be a plan to, to have people, you know, step away. Janet will be um, vacating the, the, office that she currently has because that's the office space for the director so she'll be moving back um to the police department but i think we'll spend 
sometimes sort of providing some support on the areas where she led in the leadership team um, as we transitioned. So I, um, we're hoping we should all be back together as a leadership team on Friday to sort of plan out our schedule for what the, you know the actual steps will look like. Um, I know that we've all committed to being supportive, but we haven't we haven't ironed out a plan. I mean, other than I know that you know the office will have to be vacated by April eighth, and um, we are working on putting together that uh, Bible, and we have um, delayed some decisions until after the arrival of the new director. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about the Qualtrics contract, and that's the purchase of the software system that the department is going to use for data collection that was recommended by the Donahue Institute. That contract is signed, and they are will be ready to go. And um, just today, I sent IT a um, an email saying that, you know, we there's no way that they would want to have any discussions about the implementation of that until the new director is on, right? So some things I think have to be held for for the new director, but it's signed and ready to go. There's no decisions made, it's paid for, it's it will be in place for the next three years. So we're we're trying to do all of those types of aspects of the job. Um, but leaving those big decisions and discussions for the new director. Another example would be the Harvard Government Performance Lab <clears throat> has indicated that they want to come out and do a site visit. And again, I've said to them, I think that, you know, that that visit have to occur after April 8th. And I, you know, what I said is to them today was like after April 8th, give her a little bit of time to get acclimated, right? So that she can actually participate in a meaningful way rather than having members of the leadership team be there. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, what's the, I'm a little bit confused as to the delayed implementation of the software until the new directories end. If that is a software that we will be used for the next three years, is there something specific that she needs to be there for, for the implementation? Right, so th they're gonna customize it. And so it's not just a plug and play, it requires customization. And I think that it would be wise for her to be a part of those discussions about customization rather than having the interim leadership team design something, um, you know, for the department that we're going to step away from. So it will be, yeah. it'll be completely customized. Yeah. And she, right. and she, she's going to need, need to put her, that's one of those things that the, the director, director needs to put their stamp, stamp, stamp on. There's some other things that we've discussed in the past that we haven't, haven't touched because that, because they were, you know, long, 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 long term, term things that the director, director should help guide and that, and, and should be within, within, in the direct, directors per, per, per year. I mean, one, one of the keys to a good, smooth transition is con continuity. And, uh, and, and I, and I would call the Bible, Bible a con, con continuity book. So it, it, it kind of helped helps helps you guide helps guide you along 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 the way as as you kind of kind of as 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 the leadership team steps steps away and the director the director the director take takes a larger role mm -hmm. and that's the and that that really works it, it, really, it really does nice smooth easy trans 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 transition the, I think the other reason for um, somewhat of a delay, and it'll be a short delay, is that, and uh, we had a, um, you know, a, an, a virtual site visit with the Department of Public Health about a week and a half ago, and they are um, are creating some different uh, uh, metrics that they would like us to use, and we've had some discussion about aligning their requirements with some of the things that we're going to do. And um, uh, so again, I think uh, that's another conversation where it would be important for the director to be 
uh, the person who's make ultimately making those decisions and the DPH when they met when we met with them, um, I think actually like the that during the first week that the interim leadership team was in place, they were still trying to figure out um, what their metrics would be. Um, they we they did present the department with a preliminary um, Excel sh sheet to um, to complete. Um, Kat did complete that in the meeting that we had, um, you know, about, I guess now like two and a half weeks ago, there was some discussion about refining it. They're, they want us to capture the data a little bit differently than we have captured it. And so, I, you know, there, I think there are going to be multiple um, requirements that the software system is going to need to meet, like the data that this committee and the community wants to to capture the data that needs to be captured um, for the DPH grant and thinking about ways to have those things align. Um, and I think that should, you know, the director should really think through that. The other piece of that is that um, the part of the DPH grant supported the initial Donahue assessment that was done last year that made the recommendation to purchase Qualtrics. And in the recent um, meeting that we had, um, there's still money uh, that's a line item for assessment. And they've made it clear that we need to do, um, have another assessment done by the Donahue Institute. So I think, um, you know, we'll try to get, I don't know if we'll have that assessment, probably will not be able to have that assessment done by April 8th, but we will try to push that ahead so that it's, um, you know, it's it's moving ahead and we might have an, a, a, the capability of having those results in um, before the Qualtrics um, um, contract goes forward. I, I, you know, there's just a couple of different pieces that I think need to align and I I do just feel that it's that alignment needs to be thought through by the director. Yeah. I, I have one more um, software question. H how does this software work with dispatch software? It does, or does not. It, all? it does not. So one of the one of the questions that the department. Um, wrestled with, and this was prior to the interim leadership team coming in, um, was whether to try their, the CAD system, I guess, nationally is scheduled to have some um, updates made to it that would better reflect the work of, you know, like a CRESS department or other departments like this. And um, the information that the department received from IT and from the CAD system is that that update, those updates are not, you know, they're not going to happen anytime soon. So rather than waiting for those updates to occur, the recommendation was to proceed with a different, um, you know, with a different system. So they, and they're not going to speak to each other, but I do think that someone, and it, won't be me because I don't have that technical expertise. <laughs> Someone who really understands the technical expertise of like what is captured in CAD and what can be captured in Qualtrics and how those two systems, even though they they won't talk to each other, how they might be able to complement each other. Um, it, so IT is going to be in, very instrumental in working to make sure that both of those systems work well for the department. One one thing that's about about that you can all you can all always find someone or something to build a bridge between two two systems, and dispatch is looking at go go going away from the present dispatch system because it just leaves so they've had a, had a, had it for a long time it just leave, and it leaves a lot to be to, to, to desired. One of the things they'll look 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 at is <clears throat> they build a new system or get get a new system, acquire one. Is how well it works with other systems. That's going to be one 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 of the decision points. So, but again, there's all there's all all there's always a way to build build 
build build a bridge. It's just how diff difficult that bridge is going to be to build. Thank you. Thanks. So I have a couple of questions, um, you know, about the transition. But I guess since we were talking about records and data, I guess I want to um, talk a little bit about that. And hopefully, you know, once we moved on from transition, maybe you all can share some data with us. Um, because, you know, as, as you all know, for several meetings now, we've been asking for data um, from you all. And we've been getting the same, you know, kind of response that, you know, about this new software and you all can't, you know, share data and so on and so forth, which again, you know, is concerning uh, to me. So, um, you know, wanna say it clearly that we put in, um, myself and Allegra put in a public records request because the last meeting we had, I remember Sergeant um, um, Janet Griffin saying that if we wanted data, put in a, a public records request. So put in a public records request to ask for data on CRESS. Um, uh, and so we, we we submitted that. I did receive a, a response from the uh, town uh, person who handles the public records request and saying that we should be getting a response on or before Monday, March 18th in regards to um, the records that we're, that we're requesting. So, you know, why I'm, I'm talking about it now too is that for the new director, for, for her to know that this is gonna be critically important to get this right and to get some information, get some data, because we need the data. That's a, a key part of us being able to monitor what is happening, to know what is happening, and also for CREST to be able to be transparent about the work that it's doing, right? Um, and it's very much tied in to the success of, for CREST and tied in to getting more funding, you know, which is critical, which is something that we've been asking for for CREST for, for a long time. So, um, so hopefully we'll be getting some of that information. And I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but you know, is there going to be some data that you all are going to be sharing with us tonight or? I don't really have anything to share tonight. I do want to hmm. want to speak to the fact that there, uh, that there has been, that I've been really adamant about, uh, about making sure that what we provide is accurate. And I think, um, I don't know if Earl shared the Donahue report when it was completed. Um, but I think what I would say that what the takeaway that I would would want the committee to to understand is that um, there was uh, there was some sort of a and I and I'm you know I'm saying it this way purposely there was some sort of a collection that was done by the department early on there was an assessment done by the Donahue Institute which found um, lots of uh, room for improvement. And, and the number one takeaway from that report was the obtaining the Qualtrics uh, system, which we have obtained and will be, the department will be able to implement. And in between the Donahue Institute uh, review of the first sort of data collection and where we are currently, there have been two different types of internal collection methodologies, which I would argue that someone who is very familiar with data would say is inadequate, right? I think the thing that will help the department and provide the accurate data you want is to follow the Donahue Institute's recommendation, which was to buy Qualtrics and to build out a system. And that hasn't occurred yet. So, um, you know, what, what we do have is the, uh, you know, the, the CAD reports from, um, from December 18th, and we do have the, uh, the last internal system that's being used, but, you know, quite frankly, that's not going to tell the whole picture. And it's, and in my opinion, not going to tell an accurate picture because it was honed <laughs> made without the finesse that really you need for this type of data collection, which is why we've been pushing so hard to purchase Qualtrics yeah. and follow the recommendation of the Donahue Institute. 
I mean, the bar, bottom line line is that you can you can you can you can get get all all the data the data the data that you want, but if it's bad, if it's collect 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 collected in an in a, an accurate way, all 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 you've got is bad bad data data, and that's that's not going to help in, in anyone. So and stuff like this take take takes take, takes time. You know, you have to have, you know you go you go out to bid. You have to have to find find the right the right the right right suite and all 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 that so it takes it takes time and <clears throat> come you know the the done the done the done the in in to do made made a really good call in terms in terms of saying you should look 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 at this particular particular soft soft software and that's and that's what what's what's go 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 going on i said said before we can we we can either get this thing done or get it get it done right and we're going to get it done 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 right but it takes it takes time it just takes time yeah i mean i i I get that but i know that you know for for us you know that are in the community we get pressured by the community that right now you know for several months we haven't seen any data from from crest so send 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 them send them our our, send 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 them to, to us all right. Have the have the have the have them call 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 us. We can explain explain it to them. But but you know I I understand the whole pre- 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 pressure piece. But you know what? It's going to take as long as it's going 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 to take. And it's and we're going to do this the correct correct uh, correct way. But if folks folks are out are out are out there complaining 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 or whatever. Send them our 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 way. That's not a big deal. You know, we've we've got big shoulders. shoulders. Yeah, I I get that, but it, for them it is a big deal, and for them, you know, and and for me, you know, we we want at least a picture. Right now, we don't have any picture. We don't have any idea in terms of of what is going on with Crest and in terms of the data. And that's why you know we want to make sure that we get some of this information. But anyway, hopefully, we'll get some information through this uh, public records request. But to kind of keep us moving on, um, in terms of the transition. So several of the things that I would like to 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 say in terms and hopefully see as the director gets onboarded and transitioned in is one I want to know like you know I'm assuming she's going to be getting some training to align herself with what the crest responders have gotten especially around the mission so you know we we'll be looking forward to hearing about some of that training and what it was that that she's going to be receiving. Also, of course, very important and critical that she reads all of the reports, you know, the CSWG reports, uh, any and all reports from 7th Gen and and LEAP and so on and so forth, and any and all like meetings and minutes and so on and so forth between CSWG and CSSJC, that's particular to CRESS, so that she gets the uh, full idea in terms of the mission vision of CRESS. also, in terms of when is it that she's, she'll be meeting with CSSJC, and then also, um, like I said, already we already brought it up to, to Paul, but you know I'll bring it up to you all. When is it that Allegra and I will have a, a meeting with her? It's all well and good that there'll be a, a public um, meeting with her, fine and dandy. I'll be there, but I want to obviously have a sit down with her and, and not be talking over people you know so um so you know i don't know if you have answers for that right now well i mean bottom line you know she's she's the part 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 head she'll 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 meet meet with 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 folks as 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 she sees sees fit i'm sure i'm sure she's gonna go 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 going to Uh, but that but that's really going to be excuse me that's going to be on her on 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 her plate and and for her to decide when and where and how it's going 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 to be because there's there, there there's a lot that she's going to take take in you talked talked about reading the reports and all all that yeah she'll 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 she'll, she'll, do, she'll do do that if she have hasn't already you know that she's a she's she's a good good study stu- stu- study she's a quick quick study stu- 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 study so there's going to be a lot of stuff go go going on, and she's and she's going to do it, and she she she's she's going to hit hit each piece as 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 she should in a time uh, timely fashion fashion. So I don't think there should be be a concern about that. She'll she'll meet me she'll meet meet with whomever. 
you know, but it's going to, but she's going to decide when. Yeah, I get that, but I don't think we're a whomever a committee. You know what I'm saying? We're the committee Wait that's in charge to no. oversee, um, you know, all of the recommendations of CSWG, which is CRESS. So okay, you well, all are the interim, you all are the interim leadership. So I think you all should be uh, having her, you know, communicating to her that we are one of the pivotal committees for her to meet with, as opposed to just being kind of like, oh, well, she meet with whomever, whenever, and so on and so forth. I mean, you, you miss, so, you miss, you miss, you miss my point that. completely. Can I, please, can, please, I can I interject, can I interject miss, for a miss second? My point completely. So let me inter interject for a second. So I have not built out her schedule um, and Kat and I will start to build out what her initial schedule will be uh, during the um, you know, during the first couple of weeks, but we, we haven't built it out yet. And I'm, I'm happy to build in time for you all to, to meet with her, but um, we haven't started. We yeah. haven't, you know, you like the announcement was yesterday. I mean, like we haven't built it out. Um, no, and, I get that. Yeah. I get that you yeah. all haven't built it. I just want to make sure that we're, we're put into the schedule. That's all. Yeah. And thank you, Pamela. I appreciate yeah. it. That would be great. Thank you. So um, just to, I only have a couple of other things to talk about for Crest, so I can maybe just, um, I just hit those points. So um, I know that part of the discussion that, that, uh, that you had, one of the issues that you guys had raised was about having Crest, having more public face um, and brochures and pamphlets in and more public spaces. And that was actually also a suggestion that came from to the leadership team from the fire department when we met with them and had conversations. So that is now complete. We've been, it's was in the works, but we were waiting for the announcement of the new Crest director because we didn't, it wasn't worthwhile to, to print out any information without having that director um, position completed. And I did, uh, communicate with Camille um, that the, she had a chance to see the brochures and pamphlets today, and she's approved the photograph of her that we're using. So those can just move forward, um, and I'll we'll be happy to to send you to send you those um, tomorrow when you know we they'll be finalized. Um, and those will have the new responders too. Yeah, yeah, they have the new new so it's been completely updated with uh with the new responders and with the director so they're done. Um the new responders completed their training on the 1st of March and so they're all in deployment um you know rotating through the various activities that they have. Um and I think that so far things are going fairly fairly well. Um we we use this their final day of training um, case studies that the I call them the OG responders but the case studies based on actual cases that the our veteran responders had um, dealt with they wrote the the veteran responders wrote the case studies the um, um, and facilitated the conversations and there were some role playing. So that there we could provide them with some critiques and um, information about what their actual work might might look like. So um, that was a very intense day. They were completely exhausted at the end of the day, and they went through um, six case studies, one from each of the um, responders and um, one from from Sergeant Griffin. And then we actually have additional uh, case studies that will probably. Uh, complete, but you know that was the six really filled filled the day. Um, the crest responders have had a lot of requests for community engagements. So, um, I'm you know they were at the town council meeting on the Gaza resolution. They were at the school committee meeting last night. The Tibetan proclamation. They were asked to. Um, to table at the um, Hampshire College Queer Conference. And then they also visit a classroom at Hampshire College. Um, they were written into the Blarney blowout um, operation plan. So they participated with the other, um, well, police, fire, and the other um, public safety 
um, departments that assisted Amherst police in working Blarney blowout. Um, and I will say one of the things that has happened that's been really good is that as these uh, large events have come up, um, you know, Chief Ting or Interim Chief Ting has been really good about sharing the operation plan, making sure that Crest was included and in making sure that, you know, those two departments worked well together. So uh, uh, Crest responders um, for the Blarney blowout were divided into two teams of four and tasked with um, assisting, you know, young adults um, um, to stay safe in, in a number of different ways, escorting people who were over, you know, overly intoxicated or advising them about alternatives for uh, things that they might engage in. And um, so they, they, I think they felt like they were part of a larger group. They were, um, the day starts out for the police department and the fire department with a operational meeting that starts at eight in the middle school. They were fully included and incorporated and introduced to all of the other uh, departments from the supporting communities. So they really had an opportunity to be that third branch of public safety and assist um, to, you know, de-escalate situations or assist folks um, and during during the during the event. Hi. Um, can you can you, if you can, um, you talked about case studies that the new trainees did. Can you articulate one case study? I'm just interested to see what exactly. Um, what sure, let's see. So um, I'm uh, the one that probably uh, comes to mind is uh, assistance with uh, an individual who was um, a veteran who was seeking services and, and was uh, needed support from Craig stores that they assisted to obtain housing and direct. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Um, uh, there was one uh, that worked where one of the responders was working with an immigrant family. Um, uh, there was a, a case study, I think, uh, uh, and hopefully I'm remembering this correctly, where um, I'm trying to think if I can think uh, think, I'm trying to think of the names that were given to them to see if I can remember. So I know there was one around um, assisting a veteran. I know there was one involving um, a Craig Stores. Um, uh, one case study, I think, involved um, responding to the Amherst Survival Center. So in lieu of police, uh, um, the Crest responders were called to respond to uh, I don't want altercation is too strong of a word, but you know, an, some sort of a disagreement at Amherst at the survival center. Um, I can't recall the other ones off the top of my head. That's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it for. Uh, for uh, Cress, if you have other questions, I'm about Cress, but that's those were the highlights that I had. Deborah, if you want to go first, then I can go first. Yeah, I do have some questions. Um, so, in terms of dispatch, um, do you have any more kind of examples or information in terms of um, how many situations they were dispatched to this past month? Um, and you know, obviously, it's awesome that they're doing a lot of outreach and, and being integrated in this way and helping out in regards to to to, to a lot of black community events. Um, but also in terms of just you know either people calling in or them being dispatched. Can right. you give me information in terms of how they were? They yeah. Help? So all of the calls are logged onto dispatch and then within that, so everything goes through, with every call that they receive, whether it's someone calling directly into the department or receiving a call from dispatch to the department, um, 
every call is logged into dispatch. So that's that those records are the most rec accurate about their activity overall. And um, we are still, uh, we have not expanded the seven call types. They, they still are the seven original, well, I think it was seven original and one additional. So maybe there are all the eight call types that we talked about before. They have not expanded that. Um, dispatch I, I the ver the bulk of the calls are still are still self initiated either calls that are coming um calls that the department the, the responders are calling in and placing uh, on dispatch and I'm not using the terms correctly cuz this is not my area of expertise um, but I know it is very accurate to say that the vast majority of the calls are uh, are calls that are coming in directly into the department or self-initiated. We have very few calls where dispatch is receiving a call and then directing it to CRESS. Um, there was, uh, oh gosh, I, um, I'm, I'm tired, so I'm, I'm not going to get the date correct, but I think it's been uh, about three weeks ago when there was a GPL call with, and GPL is the Go Harvard Government Performance Lab call with our dispatch um, team to start building out what the triage document would look like so that more calls can come in. More calls will be directed from, from dispatch to CRESS. Um, and, but as I said earlier, like that's one of the places where we have, have not moved um, very quickly because we think that the work that Harvard is doing should really be done with the new director as opposed to the interim leadership team. But, but I would say, in my opinion, the dominoes are stacked so that things can move very quickly once that new director is in place. Like the preliminary conversations have been had. We've done um, some work on what the expansion would look like. So when that person is in place, they should be able to move at a more rapid, more rapid pace. But the by a long shot, the vast majority of the calls that are documented on dispatch are still self self initiated calls and calls um, that are coming directly into the department. And so we you're saying self initiated. You're saying so. So just hypothetically, me, I need help. I'm calling directly to Crest, not mm -hmm. to dispatch. That's right. Exactly. Happens. And and we're. I mean, so I will say this: we're. Where's you know it it is still a. It's still a process and and working through. Um, through the how dispatch is going to direct calls. And the most recent example would be, oh, this probably, I'm gonna say that it was like three weeks ago. I'm, I'm tired, so I, I the dates, I may be off on the dates, but we received a call directly into Cress about an individual um, who was, um, appeared to be in distress and that was in the middle of the road. And the caller who called it into the department said specifically, I don't want to call the police, but I think someone needs to respond to this situation. Um, what, um, what we, and we were dispatched two people to, um, to go to the situation while they were getting ready to respond to that situation someone called the town manager's office to make a complaint about there's an individual in the road and someone else called directly 911 about the same incident. So having um, a very clear directions about how calls are responded to is gonna be critical to how things work. And um, I, you know, I think that our, our responders sort of felt as they started to make the call or to proceed, they were told directed by dispatch that um, police was already on the way. And I think they felt like, wait a minute, that was a, our call that came into us. Why is it being redirected to the police department? But 
unbeknownst to us, there were like multiple calls going into various locations. So having a triage plan is going to be extremely important. Um, following that call, the chief and I, and I don't, was, was there any, were, I, I think, I don't know if, I think Kat was on vacation. Was Janet there? So the chief and I and Sergeant Griffin met with um, Mike Curtin and with uh, interim chief Ting to discuss like, let's use this as an example so that we can figure out like what the protocol should be. How can we better um, have clarity for all of the various departments about responses? And we did make some, um, you know, we did come up with some 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 suggestions and training. And then our, um, I don't know Jason's title. I'm going to call him the second in command at dispatch. Um, then met with our responders to give them additional like training and support about about what occurs on that end. So it's it, you know it's it is it's going to require some additional work and certainly. Um, a specific sort of triage protocol. The the Harvard Government Performance Lab has walked several communities through the creation of a of that triage protocol. And so when I say I think the dominoes are lined up for things to move very quickly once the new director is in place, um, you know, they will she will be able to you know, meet with them, have discussions, review all of that doc, all of the information and sort of move things forward. Um, uh, I know Avril, you have a question, I'm assuming about this issue, but let me just do a follow-up and then you can ask your question, Avril, because then I have other questions to do on something else. But, um, but in terms of this, I mean, I think that this really showcases that example that that you showed. It really showcases, you know, some of the issues that you know we've been wanting to talk about. Um, because again, you know, what the caller was saying. Listen, I don't want the police to show up. I want you know Crest to show up. Is exactly what we've been talking about in terms of the community and the feedback that we get from the community, right? Yeah. And so for us too, it's about building, you know, trust, mm -hmm. right? And and again, Crest was created as an alternative to policing, right? There's there's going to be those situations that yes, police are the ones that need to go, right? Violent, you know, threatening, you know, there, you know, there's some type of impending threat and things like that. Yes, the police, boom, go oh, contact them and all of that. But there's a variety of different circumstances that is really a, very appropriate for Crest. And so, how are we going to communicate? To, to the community, right? Because of all of this upheaval that's been going on with Crest for all these months since Earl left and all of this back and forth around dispatch and things like that, that, you know, Crest can be a department, right? That can be depended upon for people to be able to contact them and know that they're going to be responsive and be able right. to help. And let me tell you, I mean, I've received feedback from the community, some of it not very good about Crest, right? In terms of the fact that, you know, they, they feel like, yeah, this type of thing happens, right? That they don't feel secure, that if they contact Crest, Crest is gonna be responsive and they're going to do what, what's supposed to be done. So the director is gonna have a lot of work to do right. to really build this, this, this. Um, yeah, I, I think that the, the question that people have to think about and really think through is that, so you have one community member A who calls Cress and community member B who calls the town manager's office and community member C who calls police directly, you know, calls 911 and asks for a police response. And so it's going to be the critical piece, right, that is going to need to be figured out because all those people want a response and they've all feel that they have called the place where they want to respond to them. Right. And they don't know who else has called or who hasn't called or what the other calls is, you know, then, you know, dispatches in of in a sort of a precarious predicament of trying to figure out who's going to, you know, who are they going to send to respond. And so I think that is where the the triage protocol is going to be critical. And I think that, you know, 
as I said in the meeting that we had with um, with Chief Ting and and with Mike Curtin, you know, mistakes are going to be made. People are going to be feel like this was not a crest call when it could have been a crest call, or this really is a crest call when it's probably not a not a crest call. Um, and so, trying to figure out how that is done in a nuanced way that supports the overall mission and goal <coughs> of press but is also aware of all of the other moving parts is definitely uh, gonna be a challenge. And I think that the director's ability to work with, um, you know, I keep relying on this, but I, I think it's true, the director's ability to work with the Harvard Government Performance Lab, which has walked other communities through the process will be critical because each of those people who made that call all thought that they were doing what was in the best interest for that particular situation. But you had three very different uh, approaches. And that's going to happen repeatedly as this, you know, as the department develops and grows and, and builds out. There's um I, I think that, you know, I I I said, and I'm not sure if I said it here or or elsewhere, the one uh state that I feel has done this work the best is Virginia because they created their their statutes and created the regulatory system in advance to rolling out and they create so that for them it's really clear like they already know the answers to those questions that are that that you're posing and this in the commonwealth it's unclear you know it, it is completely unclear and um what we tried to do and one of the results of that meeting was to clarify um the communication between dispatch and CRESS. In that particular case, um, dispatch knew uh, of a history with this particular location and knew that there was a potential um, for, you know, for violent altercation. Um, so, you know, they erred in the way or they, you know, they erred in, in there. Yeah, caution. They t I can't. I'm tired. So, um. well, let me add. Let me add. 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 That. that uh, I said a long time at a time ago that we are going to learn from our success, successes and and our 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 mistakes and all that. And this was one of those times which was a t t t t teachable moment. Dis dispatch got got this call, and it was a police police call. The way the way the the report pointing part 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 party uh, described the situation, this this was a uh, guy was in the middle of the street create, creating a ha 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 to tra 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 traffic and himself. So that that that's a police matter. Now there were multiple calls about this that went to different places, and you know yes, uh, and Crest called called in and said we're respond, 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 responding to, to to this call, and dispatch said, well, we've we've got more in in information on that. We're going to have 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 you not not re respond. That was the smart thing 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 to do. What that, but what that identified was a communication gap, if if you will, that that we 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 discussed, discovered, and and there and there's there's a simple fix fix to that, and 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 that has been instituted. So, and as as I said, excuse me, you know, we're we're going to learn 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 along along way, and. And that's and that's just the way because this this is all brand 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 new. We're you know we're we're, we're still still new 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 at this. So there's going to be stops and starts. So this this was a good time. This episode was a good te teachable moment and a chance to learn. Ah, this is some something that we didn't think think of, and we're and then we're we're going to fix it with a very simple fix. But all in all. But folks did what they were supposed supposed to do. The crest responders did what they 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 were supposed 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 to do. The police did did what they they were supposed supposed to do. But this was a police police matter through 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 and through. So, uh, Avril, I know you have a question, and then I'll, I I want to ask some stuff. I, I, I do. Thank you. So I, I have comments and questions. Um. So 
I'm in agreement that this was um, a very good teachable moment. Um, what I what I don't agree with is that Crest was overruled by the police because typically it's um, you know a call comes in, um, dispatch would probably say who's responding. And apparently Crest couldn't say they responded because there's no direct line between Crest and the police. And so that is no, something that that's that not, is, no. I'm sorry, that's not accurate. Because there um, is a career there. There is a direct line. They can yeah. make, and that's what they that's what they did. They called in directly to right. dispatch to say that they were responding. But and did they did not but, to? Right, because did because dispatch had had already received a call about about this for person and had sent the police to the call so and they and and the police were on their way to the call before crest uh called called in the dispatch to say that they were going to the call so so the so dis dispatch had this in, information that 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 to them and which which may make sense that this 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 is a police ma 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 matter that you're not going to send crest 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 to and that that's the right call. They have have to make you know they, they treated triage they, based on the information they were given by the report, reporting or, 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 or party. And Crest came in a little a few minutes a little later, a little later to say that they were responding spawn, responding to this call. D dispatch says, "Well, this is the same same call that I have police on on the way away to." <clears throat> I mean, so hold, so Crest, hold, 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 hold on. This is a police matter. We have a, a history. With, with this in 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 the individual and some and, and some of that his his three is by 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 so okay thank you for the clarification because I thought it was Crest town office and then the police okay that, that makes that makes more sense um so so there's a and that was gonna be my question there is a direct line between Crest and the yep. police okay yes there is so um the other question too is, um, I, I believe I heard where the police has history with, I don't know if it was this address or this person, um, mm -hmm. but does that necessarily mean that, you know, the police is going to respond every time because of the history? Because the whole goal- It depends on what, go, 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 go ahead. Because um, part of Crest is de-escalation and perhaps, you know, it's one of those situations where if the police is right. so familiar with this individual or neighborhood, it could mm -hmm. be a situation where, okay, we're familiar. However, from our experience, when we're there, things escalate, maybe Chris should respond mm -hmm. and the police will be there as backup. But that and that and that 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 could very 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 well be the case at times. But in this in this case, the the judge 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 was you know what this this is this is a police police matter. And again, as I said, we're 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 going to learn as we go 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 along. And 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 look, looking at his 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 history and come up with a. <clears throat> A good plan and I, I idea as to what, okay, if we have this this type 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 of his 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 history at this this address, yeah, maybe maybe we we can send send Cress. But the thing thing is, don't don't for, forget, gentleman was in the middle of the street cre creating a have a road road ha 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 and combine it with the fact that that there there is a there is a violent his 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 history there. So you know when you put those things together, you're like, okay, wait, 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 wait a second. And this, you know, maybe maybe if if there if if he he wasn't in 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 the in the in the street creating a ha ha hazard it may it may it may it may have been d d d d different but that but what he was doing constitute to today police police the stand, standard police police re, re, response so it, it's every every call is going to be, be d d d d different and we're going to gain more knowledge knowledge and experience experience as time 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 goes on as as i said with this this call we call we learned a couple a couple of things the kind, kind, kind of adjust how, 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 how the uh, responses communicate, communicate, so. So other than um, the police notifying Crest that they were, respond, they were responding or did respond, um, 
was was there any debrief with Chris after this to say, you know, this is one of those situations yeah. where, you know, yes, there, there was. Very... Yes, yes, yeah. there was. And, and yes, so there was. I just want to clarify. So it's the communication is going through dispatch. So it's not press calling the police or the police calling press. The communication is going through dispatch, right? Because they're they're the link between sending police out or sending sending press press out. And we have a direct line to dispatch. Um, that's why uh, when I mentioned earlier, like every action that the um, the responders uh, make, they call in. It's record. You know, it's it's documented. Um, I don't know all the proper law enforcement tech, you know, terminology, but it's doc documented in the CAS system. So they are they're recording all of the all of that. Yeah, and. Um, so there, what the debrief was initially with um, Chief Nelson, Sergeant Griffin, and myself, and then we went back to meet with the press responders and um, to to debrief with them and talk about, um, you know, how what the where we saw there was a lack of communication, where what we think what what, what follow up needed to take place, and then following that is when. Um, the responders had a, a a second meeting or um with as a as a group with dispatch i don't know jason's title i just jason jason jason's the assistant supervisor and and what what he did after that call was was completely completed he talked with one or two two of the did of the uh response responders to fill them in on what what happened and why he told 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 them not to respond so Okay. Um, one one question. One final question on um, not about this, but I don't think I I heard anything about this. In, well, in I, the... I, can I can I ask them one more question about this though before you? Yes, you can ask mm -hmm. a, a new one. Mm -hmm. So in terms of this though, I think <laughs> one of the things is, and, and I don't know, like with this patch, I'm I'm glad to hear that you all are trying to figure out how it goes because it is the right thing for dispatch, you know, for like Crest to contact them, police to contact them, that sort of thing, dispatch to kind of figure out who's going to be responding. That's the right way to go. However, is dispatch getting training in terms of how, what, when and when, when is the appropriate time to send in Crest, when and to send in police? And I think, because before it was just the police and the fire department, you know, EMTs. Now there's this whole other department so they need to really realize when is it that they need to send in Crest. And what I'm saying that is that there's going to have to be a new thinking in regards to that. Because if there's not going to be a new thinking, it's always going to be the police. Because Chief, all respect to you, even with this situation, and you've said that this person, they've the police have has had like you know interaction with them that has been violent. But guess what? Maybe it's time for Crest to, 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 to try and resolve that situation because maybe they'll get a different result. We need to start thinking a little bit differently as opposed to the same way, which is, yes, the police has been the, the, the one to always respond to that situation. That has ultimately resulted in violence. Crest is there to actually de-escalate and have hopefully a different result. So we need to start thinking about that. So even in this circumstance, I'm not totally convinced that that was the right option to, to go. And I think we need to start thinking about, and I'm really saying this, you know, in terms of really providing this patch and this whole communication around the police and Crest in, in regards to it. Because again, I, 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 wanna, I wanna really hone in on this, that for the community, this is a trust issue. They're not going to be calling in to the police. They're not going to be even calling in to Crest if they think that when they do call into Crest, who's ultimately going to be sent in is the police because dispatch is more comfortable sending in the police because historically it's always been the police being sent in. So I, we, we really need to, to, to focus in on that. Because if not, what we're doing is again, yes, great, wonderful. Crest is going out for outreach and so on and so forth, but they're not being an alternative public safety department that's there to be unarmed and, and de-escalate and, and, and really interact with people in a human fashion to really deal with, with, with situations that, that traditionally, right, the police are dealing with, which usually results in arrests and so on and so forth. 
So I, I really want us to hone in on that because when I'm hearing all of this conversation, I'm still hearing traditional responses. And so there are uh, and not uh, uh, traditional responses. And I'm again hearing Crest being utilized in a way that's okay, yes, outreach, social service, so on and so forth, but again, not as an alternative to police department, which is what they were created to do. So I just want to make sure that we keep that at the forefront. Okay, so there are two things that are in um, line to further that um the training in the relationship with the dispatch. One is the work that will be done with the Harvard Government Performance Lab. We have um, indicated that our number one priority is working on, on, on triage and on dispatch. And then the second thing is that the um, we received um, a supplement to the initial Department of Public Health grant that would fund uh, three um, uh, trips for uh, the director, a cross responder, and a member of dispatch to visit locations that are up and running so that they can, you know, learn from their peers nationally and see how that done. So we're, we're building in those opportunities that will, for training both with Harvard and with these site visits that are coming up. And uh, this is again, an, you know, an area where um, it, well, I guess the the money has to be used before the end of June, so there are likely to be three site visits with um, the new director, um, a press responder, and a member of dispatch to other locations um, who are who so that they can can have an opportunity to learn and 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 we can provide some of that that training piece. So yeah, we have anticipated the the need for. Um, for more training and um, and cross training in that area. All right, Avril, I know you had another question. I do. I'm I'm not sure if I heard this. Um, given that we do have a new director in place, was there a recommendation made, or will there be a recommendation made to have a permanent home for Crest other than the Bank Community Center? Oh, so I think that that will be a part of our recommendations, right? But, um, you know, I can tell you just knowing where the town is on on buildings and space, like they, they, that recommendation is going to be behind the DPW and the fire department, you know, so... Um, is it likely that there will be a, 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 a new home, like structured home anytime soon? No, I, we, I have had some conversations with, um, with Dave Zomack, the assistant town manager about space and location. Um, but, you know, it's conversation. I don't, I don't think there's any guarantees that there will be a different space or, lo or location in the short term. So to that end then, is there any recommendation to extend the hours of the bank community center? So I actually, um, I, I think that there are a, a couple of different ways that um, that we can, can address that. Um, and some of them actually came through conversations with the fire department because one of my thoughts was, um, is it possible for us to have the uh, overnight shifts in a location where there's actually public access 24 for seven in the fire department would be a possibility, you know, would be as you're thinking through things, a possibility, not, this was not an idea that was favored by the firefighters because they are over cramped and need a new building and need new space. And so, you know, um, but I, I do have some other ideas in my mind. Um, I don't know if I would say that they're flushed out enough that I would share them, but I think included in the among the many recommendations that I anticipate will be some recommendations about um, about space and about how you um, could actually expand the hours to go twenty four seven. Um, um, I, I think there are ways to get there. It's you know they, these are policy decisions that the that the new director and the town manager will have to, you know, 
we'll have to discuss and move on. But I, I you know, there are ways, you know, you could, you, I'm sure creatively could think of ways in which that can be done. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges and, and I, um, there, I have even thought about this. One of the challenges of simply opening the bangs longer hours is where the press department is located on this, on the second floor, right? So one way that you might be able to address that is to open the building and there, um, there is a small, I don't know if I could even call it an office, but there's a small space on the first floor of, or the ground level um, floor of the Bangs Community Center. So one thought might be, okay, we're gonna uh, um, we're gonna open up the Bangs Center. The rest of the building is probably pretty much gonna be all shut down, but could we have the people who are uh, working uh, in the evening or overnight shift in that space that's in the can on that ground level so that it's contained you know there um and so I mean you know I, I think it's a matter of thinking creative creatively about some of these problems and proposing a variety of solutions and then you know the town manager and the and the new director will have to make you know, make decisions about which way they can go. But I, you know, I'm certainly thinking about all of those things about space and location and hours and expansion, and they will, um, they will be part of the recommendations that, you know, that I'll include in the, in the continuity, what we call it continuity <laughs> booklet. So, yeah. So I, I, I know I don't make policy for the town, but, um, I've been at my office for the last same space for about six or seven years. And on that block, there has been no less than four empty office spaces for the entire time period on South Pleasant Street, which is very close to the fire department, across from town hall, very heavily foot trafficked in the middle of town. They've just been sitting there empty with Freddy signs on them for the last six or seven years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I you know, I don't I don't write the checks. So I mean yeah. you know I, I think that certainly that could be an option, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be something that I would be able to. You know, to make happen. Um, Understood. Yeah. Can I happen? So, um, can I, I can guess I in the same vein around? Um, expanding hours is there thought or consensus about a recommendation for an assistant director position and then who would would that role right now still fall to cat in the kind of ongoing onboarding of yeah. the new director so i um so i can't speak about to whether the role would would fall to cat what i can say is that we are strongly advocating for an assistant director um, the the town charter requires that um, every position be um, um, have an open search. So mm -hmm. that's the situation that we that we find ourselves in. I I strongly think that the that the department needs an assistant director. I um I, I have said I think I think I've said this publicly before. I I know I've shared it with the town manager. I I believe that the original um, organizational structure for the department. And, and I will say that in my opinion was flawed because they tried to, um, to combine two positions so that in, in many ways, the program assistant position was both an administrative position and had responsible, I would argue had responsibilities of an admin but it was also in the union. So, you know, again, this is my personal opinion. I don't, I felt very strongly that that was not the best structure. And, um, you know, certainly we've had conversations about what I think an ideal structure would look like. Um, um, and uh, I, I, can, I can say that in the current, we have not had our budget requests uh, meeting yet it's coming up on monday um 
but in 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 the budget narrative, we have advocated for uh, a, a revised structure that would include an an, um, an assistant director. Thank you. So, um, you know, yeah, and 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 hopefully that will be something that we'll we'll definitely pick up, especially when the director comes in, because we do not want what happened. Uh, previously to, to happen again, which is not to have a number two in the organization. So um, once the director is on board, that's going to be something that we're going to be really uh, bringing up uh, very often in terms of, a, of an assistant director and making sure that that hire happens. Um, but I have some questions around what Everold was, was asking um, around the space with the banks, uh, community center. Um, you know, as you know, Pamela, myself and, and Allegra went by uh, last week to, um, you know, have a conversation with Crest and kind of, you know, go go by it and talk. And yeah, it was kind of concerning um, that one, the, the elevators weren't, weren't working. So I'm not even sure how someone with accessibility issues is able to, to even, uh, you know, go up to Crest. And I don't even know how, how you all are being able to deal with that in terms of like ADA kind of violations and things like that. So, you know, that was really concerning. Uh, and I guess I want to kind of hear more about, you know, how you all are being responsive to it. Sure. Right? And, so, then, um, and then, wait, and then I have some other questions. And then when we couldn't- Can I, can I take that? Um, can, can I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I am really tired and brain. Could could you just could I answer them one at a time? It will help me be able to to answer more thoroughly. Sure. Mm -hmm. So in response to the elevator, obviously, you know, that is the responsibility of the town and um, the elevator situ uh, did not pass um, inspection or the the certificate wasn't up to date. And so it has been. Um, has been out for approximately, <coughs> I would say, three weeks. Um, I think that's right. I don't know. Jennifer, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. And um, and so on all of the entrances, the main entrances, there are signs that indicate that the elevator is out. And there is a number um, where folks who are coming in can enter the bill, who are coming in to enter the building, can call Crest directly and press responders can meet folks on the accessible floor. So if you come in um, on the parking lot entrance uh, by Johnny's Tavern, that there's a door there that, that folks could access. And then if you, on the ground level, there's also a door that's accessible. And both of them, both of those entrance ways have signs that not only for Crest, but for Crest and DEI, there's a number written where folks can call us directly and we can, if need be, go down to, to meet with them um, in accessible spaces. Um, at, I thought there was, I, I thought that the elevators were gonna be up and running last week uh, because there was an inspection or someone came by to, to review them um, last Wednesday. And so I uh, last Thursday, I thought, ooh, when I go in, there's gonna be an elevator today, um, but there wasn't. So I'm not quite certain what the, you know, where there's a, a hold up there, but that's being- The hold, the hold up, oh, the hold, the hold, the hold is it uh, to pass inspection. They need, there's some parts that need 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 to be be, be, be replaced. So with that, they're wait, wait, waiting on parts. So it's either the end of, the end of this, this week be, be beginning of next next week then 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 the parts have have to have, have to be, be be installed and then it has to be re-inspected yeah I, I mean i get that but it's just like you know crest again is a priority we're building a, a you know trust and a relationship with the community and you know uh you know not having a working elevator and not making sure that I, that the elevator so the town i'm speaking to the town not necessary to you all but for the town to not you know see this as a priority for for those that have accessibility um difficulties is is problematic you know and then it's another layer of challenge for folks that are trying to access crest like i said we get the feedback from the community and i know a, a chief that you say for us to send the community to you but not the community is not very you know they, they go to folks that they trust right so they trust me they're going to come to me right they gonna go to i mean that's that's all well i mean that's that's all well well and good but i mean let's i mean we're talking talking about a broken l l l l 
elevator here. Town is doing the best best they can to get get it fixed. Are they? It it are yeah they? they are you know so I mean they they are you they're wait waiting for parts. I mean they're waiting for 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 parts. And you know I mean in 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 the world we live 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 in now. Uh, the whole uh, oh crap I forgot to forgot forgot the phrase but the whole uh, the uh, supply 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 chain issue issue. We 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 wait wait we we wait wait for stuff that that's cr cr critical as, as as well. That's the world we live. In. The town is doing the best best it can to get the elevator fixed in a time time timely fashion because they know it's needed needed by you folks. Things break. Yeah, but you know what? If I if I'm someone that has a disability, I don't think I would I would be as just um relaxed about it. Right. So I'm, I'm again, I'm not relaxed. I'm, I'm, I'm the one relaxed. that's the voice. I'm the voice for those that, that, that are voiceless and can't, you know, kind of talk about those things, you know, that English is a second language and so on and so forth, because I'm an immigrant to this country. So I remember my parents when they weren't able to discuss these things and they didn't have access to these buildings and so on and so forth. So I think creating another layer where they have to call in to get Crest to come downstairs and so on. That's, that's already a layer that they're going to say, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to go there. So I'm, I'm just telling you all something. You all can hear me or not. You know, you can disregard me, you know, but I'm telling you something right now. Right. And I'm telling you that us CSSJC, we're here because we're the voice of the community. People come to us because they don't feel comfortable just going directly to you or going directly to you, Pamela, or so on and so forth. Right. So I'm telling you something. So if you want to disregard me, go right ahead. But I'm telling you something, right? Which is the voice of people who are coming to us and letting you know some of the things, the 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 reasons they feel uncomfortable accessing Crest and the reasons they feel uncomfortable accessing that building. And then the other layer, which I'll continue forward, is the layer of then when we did walk up the stairs, then there's this whole kind of like again, call in and buzz in. I mean, that was not the the visioning of. Of, of Crest. Crest was supposed to be a place that's open to the community. Anyone can come in at any time and hopefully extended time, not just like, I don't even know what the hours are, 8.30 to 4 or something like that, to be able to deal because these are folks that are in crisis that are dealing with serious situations and they need assistance. So why is there another layer of buzz in, call in, let me in, so on and so forth? I, I don't understand that. And then again, I, I, what I'm telling you is that people are going to say, why bother? And we do not want Crest to be not successful and not utilized. We want them to be a, a, a resource for the community. So yes, can you respond to that too? So the, that decision was made by the former director. Um, and I don't know what the right, it wasn't that, that those, those systems were already in place um, when I first got got that well when DEI moved in those 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 um, systems were are were already in place. It was not a decision made by the leadership team, and I I don't know the rationale for that. Jennifer, you're are, are you are you, I thought you turned your camera on because you might have known something, but um, no. I just came back. I had to step away. What was the question? Um, uh, uh, the question was about the um, security fobs that are at the end of the hall, and I was just saying that they were they pre-existed, like the leadership team. They they that was a decision that the former director m made. So I don't I don't know the rationale behind that. Yeah, I get it, but I mean, you know, you all have made lots of changes that are different than what the the, the former director did, but with this one, you just decided to follow it. I guess I don't get it. Yeah. This well, one there's one that, there, that, that in terms of like access to making sure that it's it's open to the community so that a community can go there and not have another extra layer of challenge. But then, you know, that's so in the I would say hundreds of decisions that we've had to make about Cress. Um yeah, I this the other there were other things that were a higher priority from my perspective. Um, and I, I actually don't, to be honest with you, I don't even think that I realized because I never took the stairs before the elevator um, was out. I don't even know if I had 
a second thought about stairway access because the elevator was how I entered the building um, until the, you know, for the, until the last uh, three weeks. So, okay. So now hopefully now that you know, then hopefully some changes can be made then. Right? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I am, I am on a, April 8th is my deadline for, for making, you know, I'm, I am preparing not to make decisions um, uh, for the department during this next transition. Like I, you know, I'm trying very hard to have the energy to move things forward uh, on the, in for the things that are the major, what I would say are the major priorities, which is continuing to work with Harvard around, um, uh, uh, around dispatch, moving forward, we need to move to get the um, Donahue Institute to do a second assessment because that's required by the DPH grant. You know, um, so I'm I am going to do my best to do what I think are the key um, priorities. And while it, it is inconvenient, I certainly get that. While it's not ideal, I certainly get that. I. I'm not, uh, I don't have the ability to correct the situation with the elevator. I, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm I am at the mercy of facilities like everybody else. So, okay, so the community having access to the, to, to Crest is not necessarily a priority right now. No, that's not what I said. What and um, um, what I, what I said was, I don't have the ability to correct the issue with the elevator and that there is access um, available um, for folks to be able to meet with a crest responder. And there's very well, like visible. Like downstairs in the lobby? I mean, is there a separate room that they there are There are rooms available downstairs, yes. Okay, so they're going into a room, I, I would assume, like a private room. Because right, right. we here to deal with like crisis situations. Exactly, exactly. In fact, um, earlier in this conversation, I said, one of the options that I would recommend is that for extended hours, there is a room on the on the ground level um, floor that might be a possibility to have so that you could have that part of the bill. You could open up that uh, the the door, the access to that door, and have space for folks to come in. Um, so there are there are there are rooms available downstairs for folks to meet with crest responders or for DEI, we're in the same, we're in the same situation where folks aren't able to access us either um, by, um, you know, at, in a space that's accessible downstairs. Okay, well, I guess I'll be taking this up again with the director once she's on board. Okay, yeah, I'm done with my questions. All done talking about Cress Everald. Do you have any other questions? I do not. Thank you. Um, so why don't we move on to DEI updates? And thank you, Chief Nelson, for joining us. And if you need to go, we understand. Yeah, thank yeah, you. probably. Uh, well, Gene, 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 Gene has ticked her off of me all already. So, eh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chief Nelson. Appreciate your time. Not a problem. We'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye. So Jennifer, please weigh in. I just, again, have a short list for DEI. Um, our National Day of Racial Healing event, which was originally scheduled for January, was rescheduled for the 29th of February. Um, and I and that event went well. I don't know if we, I can't remember whether we discussed that at the last meeting. Um, and um, the there's a group of facilitators for what we're calling the Becoming Beloved Community Initiative that are members of both town staff and community members. We have uh, tentatively agreed to a schedule to meet on a bi-monthly basis. The next event will be in April. Um, and we have, um, for the for the next event, the topic will be uh, microaggressions and implicit bias. That group will be meeting on Thursday uh, of the, not tomorrow, but a week from Thursday. 
to um, to talk about and um, prepare for our facilitation for the next group and for the next meeting in April. And then our goal is to continue those events um, throughout the year. So it would be um, at least now six events on, um, annually. And hopefully at some point we will have a little, feel a little bit more capacity um, to build that out. Uh, we received the final report of the on the resident oversight board on uh, community engagement. Um, I think it came in late last week. I have not even read the report yet. I've just been overwhelmed with other things on my plate. Um, but that one is received so that we can now proceed. And uh, um, Jennifer and I reviewed the RFP for the uh, technical assistance uh, portion, and that um, we provided feedback to the procurement office um, and finance today. So that is in queue to go out. Um, my guess, best get will, guess will be that um, it will be uh, published sometime in the next week or so, and which I think we are still in on a good track to have a resident oversight board in place before the end of the fiscal year. So um, the technical assistant grant um, seeks a consultant to do the policies and the procedures, the training of the initial members of the board so that once that the completion of that portion of the technical assistance, it would be up and operational. So that's moving ahead. Um, the DEI office has applied for a grant to support its cultural events. Um, Jennifer, if you can, I can't remember who, oh, that was through the uh, Pioneer Valley Pub, um, Planning Commission, right? PV, I can't remember. I think it was PVPC, the, the grant that we sent yesterday. Okay, so that, that um, it, grant um, was completed, that grant application was completed yesterday. We are in communications and have um, are looking at um, applying for another grant through the Mass um, Cultural Arts Commission. Um, again, that would support um, efforts around becoming beloved community um, and just in the very preliminary stages have had um, an initial conversation and we'll, um, we'll be thinking about that. There's an upcoming webinar on the grant application process and the grant itself is um, not due until I think May and the funds would not be available until September. Um, so we have a little bit more time to work on that. Um, there's a staff event on gender um, as part of our regular monthly DEI events for uh, employees on Friday. And um, I don't know if I have anything else. Jennifer, if you have something else to add, please weigh in. Oh, Jen is going to the, you're going to the school when? Tomorrow for youth environment? Yes. Okay. Um, can we see the report from the consultant? Is that something that will be made public or is that? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure. I don't, um, I don't know. I, I don't know where we would publicize it. Like if we wouldn't ne maybe necessarily, I guess we could post it on the DEI, um, website, which would be happy to do, um, yeah, I I just I have had so many other things going on. I haven't had a chance to read to read it, but it is complete. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and so Jennifer, you, oh yeah, can you ahead. talk a little bit more about the youth empowerment in the schools? So tomorrow will be uh, my first visit at the middle school to speak to the kids going to a specific classroom. Um, for two periods, I believe, on, and then bringing the survey and then the QR code to the survey so that students can fill it out there so that we can get a little more feedback. I'll have to do the data entry once I get back. 
Um, and then from there, hoping to do the lunches at both the middle school and the high school moving forward. Thank you. Deborah. Um, ask Jen a question. Um, are you doing the RISE program with Becky as well? I am, yes. Yeah, so maybe talking a little bit about um, about that. So Amherst Rec, APD, DEI uh, are working with RISE, which is a national organization to work on DEI issues with middle school aged children in the police department. So it is going to shadow the morning movement program and it's specific, in a way it's about that same time and with the PD that have already attended some of those morning movements. And so they spend one, it's a two hour event. So we're half hours dedicated to DEI work and the other time is dedicated to them having about playing basketball. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I have some questions. Um, so around the resident oversight board, um, just to kind of clarify and reaffirm. So you're saying that based on the report, then you're going to be hiring a consultant? I, I guess I'm confused. And then and then there should be a board in place by June 30th? I I think that that is the plan that there would the the um the original RFP that we have that we issued last year of course we weren't able to have a successful um to that wasn't successful and so the plan thereafter was to divide that that work into two parts so the first part has been completed the second part had has always been that there would be a, a consultant hired to do the technical assistance um, and a portion, which is all of the writing of the policies and procedures, um, training of board members. It's uh, it's everything that's needed to stand up the resident oversight board, and um, and I think that um, uh, that we are still on a good track to have that work go out for bid and to have a re to have it completed before the end of the fiscal year. So I think it'll go out to bid, as I said, like probably next week. So if um, if we, um, which means that we would be hiring someone probably in April and they would have, you know, the, um, all of May and all of June to complete the technical assistance so that the new board would be, um, would be up and ready for the new fiscal year, which is July 1st. So um, I am, you know, I obviously can't foresee um, everything that might occur, but the the we're on the right path to have that occur um, before the end of the fiscal, be, before the end of this fiscal year to have everything in place and ready to go by July 1st. And um, when when would the report be kind of posted? Because I know you haven't read it, so it's not like we can engage in conversation about it. Yeah. Will that be posted? Because I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably have some questions the next meeting. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, we can we can post it probably tomorrow or the next in the next day. I mean, the um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that we um have anticipated making any changes in the technical the the technical assistance port of a portion RFP was was drafted months ago because it was always anticipated that it that the first portion portion would be provided to whomever is hired to do the second portion um so that they will will utilize um the knowledge and comments and all of the um information that has has come the the technical assistance rfp also makes reference um to the community the work of the community safety working group so all of that is included as background and supporting information for whomever is hired to stand up the board okay all right so we'll, we'll get more um, information as as that continues um, what about the, the youth empowerment? Um, so 
you know, we're still at the phase of, I guess, just like surveys and 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 questions. So there's no programming yet, or um, um, any idea for a space for for youth empowerment. So um, yeah, the, the space issue has, um, and I think I've reported this before that the space issue. Uh, the town manager had said that he was going to form a working group to work on space. So space is not something that the DEI office has taken on that the issue of like space in a, um, uh, the creation of a youth empowerment center is, is, is not in our purview at this moment. Um, our focus has been on programming um, and it's, it's been a very disappointing year because we really anticipated that the AmeriCorps member would have would be able to be very helpful in pushing along the work around youth em empowerment, and that just did not occur. That um, AmeriCorps member position was designed specifically to be shared by CRESS and DEI to work around youth empowerment. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, that it, you know, it's a failure because we haven't been able to move that um, along. And, you know, my, I uh, regret not digging in my heels and, and doing programming because I, I sort of, I believe that if as a department, we had started with program that was initiated by the department, we would have at least gotten the ball rolling and there would have been ample opportunity for, uh, for the youth to provide their input about future programming, but having um, conceded and tried to obtain um, information from the youth first, and that has not, hasn't happened, there's been no programming. And, um, you know, essentially the entire year has, that project has not moved forward at all. It's, you know, that's just the reality. There's very little um, that we can say that has been accomplished. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, for us, you know, we think that, I mean, obviously AmeriCorps, I think there's more kind of like a, a situation because of the budget, the budget problem. But as we've stated previously, we need more, um, you know, full-time uh, employees within DEI to be able to carry this out. And that's why we were very concerned when you were pulled off of it to go help with Crest, because some of these other um, situations in terms of the youth empowerment, which is something, you know, that we need movement on. And, you know, we haven't seen what the budget item for the next fiscal year, it, you know, will be for the youth empowerment in terms of from the town manager. So there's there's a lot of concerns in terms of moving that forward. And needless to say, we're not even talking about the multicultural center. That's the other, you know, that's another, um, you know, recommendation that still hasn't gotten any traction. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot on the plate that needs to kind of, you know, right. be focused. And I'm hoping after the eighth, there can be some refocusing on on some of these DEI um, initiative, especially the ones that were within CSWG report. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I hope that as well. I mean, it, it has been certainly has been a burden to have uh, responsibilities for two departments, um, both, you know, physically and mentally. And, and both departments have probably uh, suffered you know, certainly the DEI office has suffered greatly because I haven't been able to support Jennifer. She's had to take on a lot of the responsibility and there have been things that we haven't been able to address um, um, in not only uh, youth empowerment, but one of the things that, um, that we did in our first year was to visit every department in the town to provide some workshops. And that has not occurred that uh, this year. And I've you know, I, I've made that um, clear to the town manager that for me, that's a, that's a huge uh, loss. We're going to attempt to do um, some combined workshops for departments, probably in April and May and in June, but, you know, we've lost a full year uh, of momentum and every department last in the first, my, the first fiscal year had an opportunity to work with us individually. So, Certainly, the responsibilities of the Crest Department have has had a huge adverse a impact on the DEI department. Um, you know, it had been my sincere hope that um, that a hire would happen within 
three months. And I knew that that was an aggressive schedule, but you know, six months is a long time to be wearing two hats and trying to, to, to manage and support two departments. Um, that, that, you know, I needed a clone months ago. I don't have any other questions. Well, do you have any questions related to Rob or youth empowerment? I, I do not um, have any questions. Thank you, Pamela. And um, just having sat here with you month after month, I'm very excited for you that April 8th is almost here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have been doing a lot, so thank you again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for me, but for me though, I mean, you know, that's why we were saying that some another type of decision should have been made in regards to to Crest because we knew that DEI was going to suffer if a Pamela was pulled from that to then focus on 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 Crest. So, you know, it, it, it's just problematic that what we had kind of foretold came to pass. next thing on our agenda is the police chief search so um my my update is going to be very limited and that's deliberate um so we we met with um the first round candidates and we are scheduling second round interviews with the intent here to be um we do in-person interviews and then followed by a public, by public, I mean, the general public as a whole is invited to come in and ask these candidates questions um, openly as to um, why they want to be chief of police in town of Amherst and essentially see how they respond to public inquiry, so to speak. And in that regard, then make a recommendation to the town manager who, who then will meet with the candidate and um, whomever, he or, whomever he chooses as well for that um, additional part and then make a decision either to choose someone or extend or continue the search if um, he's not comfortable with how the candidates responded to public questions and or how they do in the second round interviews. Um, the HR office is working to coordinate times. The intent here is to have these second round interviews and followed by um, public meeting slash interviews within the next couple of weeks. We're hoping that we can, if we're lucky, get something on the books either in the, lower, in the last week of March or in the early weeks of April. And we're trying to put it um, a little bit far out so that the public can be fully apprised that this is happening and that way they can come to. Um, the meetings will be, interviews of such meetings will be done at town hall. That way they have access to these people. They can come and ask questions of them. So we're trying to be as um, give essentially the people as much of a voice in this show as possible. So we want to be able to advertise that this is happening um, before we do it. So as many people can come um, and ask questions of their potential chief of police. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that there will be public meetings. That's, I think, a good thing. Yes. Um, so um, again, the hope is to have um, a full day where they'll be available to for second round interviews as well as meeting with the public. Um, so all will happen in the same day because these are in person. And so we're inviting people who do not live in Amherst to come to Amherst and um, have these interviews. So, Avril, let me ask you a question. Um, well, I guess, are you at liberty to share, you know, how many um, candidates 
have made it or will make it to the second round? I cannot. Okay. Uh, what about whether we have a diverse pool? And when I say diverse, not just racially, but everything, I mean, but racially included too. Do we have a diverse pool? I think we do have a diverse pool. Um, I think um, we, we started with a very diverse pool. And then, of course, in meeting together as a committee, we eliminated some people. Mm -hmm. um, so we did go through that process. Yeah, which is yeah, which is part of the yeah. process. Obviously, you start yes. with a bigger one, and then you start kind of shrinking the pool. Yeah, yes, it's understandable. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other question in terms of when they come. So, from what I'm hearing from you, is that they'll come for a full day of interviews, which will include the second round, and then interviews with the public. Which again, it is good news because I was part of you know a lot of the feedback we gave to the consultant that I had initially. Um, gathered information from you know all of us in the community but I guess for me in terms of getting information from the community and from us because obviously I would like to be there to ask some of these questions is you know it is going to be in person is there a hybrid component because I don't think everyone's going to be able to be in person at the town hall so people don't feel comfortable being in, in the town hall and going there because it's not a very welcoming place. So is there a hybrid component? Um, and for either the in-person or hybrid, whether there's gonna be translators there to make sure that other languages, people who are English not, is a second language that they'll be able to um, ask the questions um, for the public um, you know, when they come out. And then you need to think about when are you scheduling these, right? So at the end of the day, if you're only going to schedule one component for these interviews, then making sure that it's, you know, at least after five so that it can hopefully accommodate more people being able to um, take part in it. Because usually during the day, a lot of people can't do that. So I guess those are some of the questions that I have. Um, ha has some thought been given to this? So I will have that conversation with Melissa about availability for translation services and a hybrid model. Um, we did not discuss that yet. What we're trying to do is trying to lock down the schedule. Um, in terms of um, timing, we were looking at um, the, the biggest issue for us um, right now is the committee schedule because every person on the committee has a regular nine to five. And so it's been challenging. Um, but I can tell you now that the um, we're trying to do afternoons to your point. We're trying to do afternoons or options to see and looking at the, um, the availability now, it seems that even more likely than not will be afternoon session. Um, that this will happen. So hoping that people will be, um, I, I cannot say it will be after five. Um, I, I cannot say that with certainty it will be after five, but I know that the afternoon sessions that we've talked about now will not start before 2 p.m. Um, with the understanding that it will run beyond um, we didn't put a time block as to when it will end, um, but we, we didn't schedule anything after five. The, the time frame that we're looking at starts at two and then it just continues. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, if, if, if you can take, take back that, that feedback, you know, because like I said, a lot of times evenings really would be the better situation to get, you know, more people, um, engage and 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 again yeah if there's a hybrid because i know the town hall can do that they can do hybrid um so i don't see why it wouldn't be because that would be more inclusive to be able to have you know people who can be there in person and those that can't to be able to to to, to be on you know on hybrid and then obviously of course you know making sure to publicize this really well share it with our group so that we can get it into our networks um, because of course we'll need to you know get out the word as, as much as possible so people can be available to ask questions. But yeah, if you can uh, share that feedback, because I think if if you all end up holding it at a time that's not accessible to a lot of people, um, then you know what feedback are you actually going to get? You're going to get the feedback from the 
the usuals who are going to be able to go, but then what about those that actually need to go uh, and, and be involved with that, that might have more critical kind of understanding and information that they want to share and ask questions, um, and then they won't, they won't have the access. So I think we, you know, I think when this gets scheduled is going to be really important. And I think as long as the town has the capability to do the hybrid, I don't see why we wouldn't do it. Um, because again, to your point, the intent here is to have as much public engagement as possible. Yep. Jennifer, I see your hand. Yep, I'm most likely going to be at the community events and I can run the hybrid meetings after you talk with Melissa about that. Okay. So that she doesn't have to worry about that piece of it. Um, and then one more question. So towards the end, so after all of these uh, meetings and the feedback, so the feedback will go back to the search committee and then the search committee kind of makes final recommendations. Is that how it goes? I guess I'm just, I just need a point of clarity. It would. The goal here is to recommend um, someone to the town manager after these um, meetings slash interviews. And then the town manager will meet with them with HR director, I believe is Melissa, and maybe another person. And then they'll make a decision whether or not they think this person is a good fit or if they should extend or continue the search to see different candidates. Okay. Um, all right. I don't think I have other questions. Okay. Questions. If what Allegra, we couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Did you say you do have, have other questions, or you think that's it? No, I don't think I have other questions. Okay. Um. So the next item on our agenda oh, is Pamela. Pamela has her hand up. Oh, Pamela has a question. So oh, I don't have a question. I'm just wondering if you need me for the remainder of the uh, agenda. I was. Um, with the responders last night uh, pretty late. And so I, and if you don't need me, then I will um, excuse myself and review the, the minutes, especially since you don't have a quorum and won't be voting on any actions tonight. Fine with me. Yeah. The, the only thing that I saw at uh, on the agenda that's coming up and I, I I can't recall whether I sent you guys an, an email was about the civil rights complaints. Mm -hmm. Did I send, yeah, the, yeah. send the information about the HRC having that bylaw? So, mm -hmm. um, but all right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to try to get some dinner and go to sleep. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Bye. So I'm also looking at the time and looking at the agenda and thinking, we're probably not going to get through all of it tonight. So I'm wondering if we can talk about the restorative justice and other budget cuts because that is time sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I would probably put off talking about the co-responder and the police until in the schools until we could actually like figure out somebody to come like perhaps the co-responder clinician coming or somebody um and then and then yeah i added the the holding the future town forms i think it's just it's just for us to kind of start thinking about that like yeah. when we might want to do that um but we don't necessarily have to kind of discuss it i think that could be also just kind of a hold for at you know keep it on our agenda so that that can stay uh, top of our mind until we think we're ready to kind of do that. And that would be, you know, forums actually in uh, places where the community is, as opposed to holding it at the town hall or what have you. Um, and then the last one too, I had added it just to see if there was any updates on the town council liaison. I have not received anything from Len. Um, yeah. So I, I don't, I, and again, when the I think it was February 26th the meeting was rescheduled or I can't remember if that was rescheduled to March 4th or something like that when that meeting was rescheduled I think they pushed off a bunch of things that were on the original agenda um so I think the discussion about liaisons might have been one of them so 
Okay, so we can just leave it on and then we can, yeah. you know, see if we can check in with them between now and our next meeting to see if there's any updates. All right, so then, um, well, I, I still think like if we have the bandwidth, we let's talk about the restorative justice. If we have the bandwidth, if we can talk at least a little bit, I'll begin the conversation around the civil rights complaints. It's not like we can make any decisions anyway. Yeah. Just at least have a conversation about it. Yeah, um, so let's start with the restorative justice and then move to civil rights complaints. Mm -hmm. Allegra, do you mind kind of starting that? Because I know you were able to kind of, were you there for the entire meeting yesterday? Yes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so you'd probably be the perfect person to start us off and then I can chime in and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the school committee had a really long meeting yesterday <laughs> about the proposed budget cuts at the regional district level. So that's the middle and the high school. And um, one of the positions that is planned for cuts, um, the, the restorative justice coordinator position at both the middle and the high school. Um, and so that was a position that had come about to kind of address some of the disparities in discipline. And it really has been a conflict resolution, problem solving skills, you know, relationship building program. Um, and a bunch of kids came out and talked about their work with Mr. Buford, who's in the high school. Um, and a lot of teachers talked about kind of the ripple effects of having restorative practices in the schools to, you know, not just the social emotional aspects of things, but seeing how it plays out in the classrooms. Um, so that is one of the major cuts. There are also cuts to mental health staff being proposed, um, a full-time staff person at the high school and a half-time position at the middle school. They are talking about changing the, uh, the structure of how they deliver language instruction at the middle school from every day to every other day, which really would be about twice a week. Um, so the concern would be that kids aren't going to get enough preparation in the languages they're studying to actually be able to start in high school and continue on to, um, to reaching AP classes. Um, they are planning to consolidate department heads, um, which would again result in more work for fewer teachers. And um, there's some changes to a math position and a computer science position and um, also removal of positions from the prep academy, which is kind of the intervention for kids who are struggling um, and often can help kids avoid um, you know, getting placed into special education classes and then from the Ames program, which is one of the special ed programs as well. I think I, I think I got them all. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty significant set of cuts and it cuts a lot of very vulnerable student facing positions, um, as well as having impacts for BIPOC youth and youth of low incomes and English language learners, which is why um, Deborah and I wanted to put it on the agenda because it is a social justice issue in our schools. Um, and so what ended up happening yesterday was the committee did not take a vote on the budget. They did ask for the superintendent to put a budget together that included funding to restore the teaching positions that they would then vote on tomorrow, which is the deadline for them to pass a budget so that it can go to the other regional towns, town meetings. Which town has to vote in. And um, so that, that was the solution that they had come up with and that they will have to find the funding to- We can't hear you as well, Allegra. Sorry. Um, so that was the 
request that they made of the superintendent. Um, and tomorrow will be the day they have to vote on the budget. Can you just repeat the request? Because you kind of like. Yep. Um, so the request was that the superintendent rewrite the budget with including the include uh, there's about a million dollars in cuts that would be directly impacting the classrooms and then there are some other cuts that are kind of consolidating things here and there and then you know um i think there were two central office positions and two janitor positions that were also being cut which certainly the facilities need all the support that they can get as well um so was that he put a million dollars back in the budget and then they would vote on that and then if it passes they would then have to ask for more money from the towns and possibly look to partner with um, some of the local universities to see if they would increase any of the funding that they give to the schools so um, I mean I was think there? with our one of the focuses that we have being youth empowerment. And I think restorative justice ties in with CRESS and with youth empowerment. Um, I just, I did want to bring it to everybody's attention and to let people know that they can still show up tomorrow at the meeting at the high school, which I believe is at 630. Um, so. was, was there any rationale to the budget proposals other than money, saving money? Um, Not that I heard. <laughs> did you hear any rationale besides saving money it's just that they aren't able to balance the budget and this was the way that they were going to be able um to balance the budget because you know i think there's there might be some repercussions or something but you know one of the big things is like why would you make decisions based on you know as allegra said uh, positions that would really impact those that are most vulnerable and most mar marginalized and you know need those services, especially around like if we we're talking about restorative justice, that is an alternative to discipline. And we know that disproportionately and adversely, you know, uh, students of color, BIPOC students are the ones that are impacted. You know, students with disabilities, ESL students, and so on and so forth. And so, and needless to say, the position being cut would be a a, a black male who would be cut from that position. Um, one of the things that I shared yesterday, which is, you know, very kind of like, you know, just personal and real time is that, you know, my son hasn't had a, a black teacher throughout, he's an eighth grader right now, you know, he's a black boy, hasn't had a black teacher um, throughout his education. He had one art teacher in the seventh grade in the middle school for a, a, a few months, which actually he was excited about. They were all excited, all the, 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 the black um boys in the middle school were very excited about it and then he got terminated you know within the first like two three months at the middle school in a devastating way that he was kind of crying because my son came home and was like mom they fired him and and all of that so actually that was traumatizing and so now he was going to finally get a teacher once he gets to high school because he's a rising ninth grader soon and the position you know with the black man is the one that's on the chopping block so it, it, it's that and a variety of other, as Allegra has stated, you know, language. Another real life example, my son is in the middle school again. He wasn't even able to get, get language now. He wasn't even able to take the class now. And I talked to the language coordinator at the high school. So he said that my son, for him to be able to get to the part, to be able to do AP, right, to take language all four years, he's going to have to double up, you know, and 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 really re re order his his schedule so if they're going to further take away positions in the world language kids are not going to be able to take classes in the seventh and eighth grade and be impacted again what are we setting up our kids for right this is a we, we say that we're setting them up for a diverse you know um, world for a, a world that they're interacting with others and then you're you're cutting positions that deal with language um you know it, it doesn't make sense, right? In terms of, you know, the decisions that they made and who was impacted. And so there was an outpouring yesterday, outpouring, you know, I know myself, a, lot, a bunch of us mobilized the community, others throughout the community all mobilized the community 
and there was an outpouring in person and and through you know calling in and leaving messages and basically saying that this was not okay and that they needed to look at the budget again and they needed to think through you know other decisions so as not to 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 cut these positions did you have other questions Avril? this 1 million dollars um is it is it just specific to the school's budget or the town budget as a whole? That's not that one. Schools. Yeah. The school's budget. So that's why one of the counselors did this pro proposition of, you know, still uh, kind of not making the cuts and then, you know, going and asking the towns, right? Because it's regional. So there's Amherst, Pelham, Shrewsbury, and what other one? Is there another one? And Leverett. So four towns. So then seeing if the towns would then make up you know, the difference so that there wouldn't be these cuts. And basically yesterday it was really like a historical kind of also getting the history around it. There's been cuts already. And that's why I said, and that's why, so when my oldest was in high school, he was able to get, I mean, in middle school, was able to get language both years. So now that my youngest, you know, what is it? You know, five years later is in the middle school. He's not able to get language for both years, right? So the, every, you know, every few years they're cutting, they're cutting. So everyone is basically yesterday in terms of when, you know, they, they, there were people there who worked in the, in the system, in the school system, been there for years. And so they're telling us the history of how these cuts have been coming and have been coming. And so what we're saying is like, you, you can't continue to make these cuts, especially the teachers. You have to find other ways. You have to find other funding sources. You have to find other ways to really make this happen, right? And, and as we say, there's, you know, you know, even the town. So let's say if we do go to the towns to ask for this money, that should be a priority to fund our school, to make sure that our kids are getting the education that they need, right? Especially around restorative justice. We, we, there were so many young people yesterday that came in and, and really shared how restorative justice has been helpful to them. And it's youth of all racial backgrounds, all orientations, everyone that utilizes restorative justice, right? Um, and so it, it really is kind of showcasing how important, um, you know, the, 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 this would be and these cuts would be. So one other thing too, I went to the um, ninth grade, a rising ninth grader conference, you know, preparation to, to selecting courses at the high school, I believe it was last week. And it was a great, you know, um, you know, seminar to kind of prepare as parents to, to, so that our kids will know how to pick the courses. And it was interesting because one of the cuts is to consolidate the department heads, because right now, I don't know, they, they might have like maybe 11 department heads, don't quote me on that, but let's say hypothetically it's 11. But when I, when they introduce all the department heads, again, nothing, I don't have anything personal against anyone, I believe they're all great people, but I was astonished to see that they were all white people, right? That there wasn't any department head that was, at least seemingly to me, of color. Um, and so if they consolidate them, it, you know, one, not only is it going to create more work for, for, for these folks, but it's also going to lessen the opportunity for anyone of color to actually be a department head. Why don't we have department heads of color? Besides the, the principal, obviously, you know, Mr. Sadiq is a person of color, but besides him, I didn't see anyone else in leadership positions, right? And so that's detrimental to our students of color to not see other people that look like them in leadership positions. So, so again, these cuts would further kind of delineate the option to really hire, you know, more diversity and more inclusivity in regards to it. Um, you know, the other one is in terms of math, which, which I have, you know, they're, they're cutting math. There's also issues in terms of the math program. Right now they have a math program that kind of like forces, they, 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 they pick which kids go into a higher math or a lower math, um, which, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I've talked to them that, you know, that really doesn't show equity that you either have one math or you let, you know, kids choose which math they wanna to go to. You can't force a kid to, to go into one math or another based on subjective tests and assessments, which you know, a lot of times are not uh, equitable towards, you know, BIPOC kids, kids with disabilities, ESL kids, so on and so forth. I mean, the same marginalized group, right? Um, and so cutting math is only going to exacerbate uh, the situation. And I've been very vocal. I've, I've met with the curriculum math person in the middle school and at the high school. 
and and everyone that's in, in, related to math. And now I, I see the cuts because for me, my kid went through this and it was not pleasant. And so I don't want other parents to go through this in terms of math, especially when you're a kid of color. And then if you're forced to be in the lower math, you know, what happens, right? In terms of your confidence and stigmatizing and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and, and what are those decisions based on? Um, and unfortunately, and I, I have to say it because I see it all the time with my kids being black boys, right? Being black males, they've always been underestimated within the Amherst school system that they, you know, oh, it's going to be too much work for them. They're not, are they really able to do it? And things like that, which then I have to be like, yes, they are able to do it. My son is a sophomore at NYU. So yes, I think he was able to do it. But I got those questions when he was in middle school all the time. Like, are you sure he can, you know, do this, you know, AP work and, or, you know, in the middle school that he could do the higher math and this and that. And I'm just like, what, wait, what? So, so those are the types of things that it's just like, if we let these cuts, it, it's already tough. <laughs> if we let these, if, especially for BIPOC parents, if we let these cuts happen, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So I just wanted to share some real life examples. <laughs> Yeah. Because I'm feeling it right now with my with my children, I have felt it, you know, with my oldest and now with my youngest, who's in the system right now as an eighth grader. Very helpful. Thank you. So I was hoping that we could help. And I'm hoping that you all that have younger children, we want to do what so that you all's kids don't have to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to do, right? We want to do things for. The other ones, the younger ones and the yeah. future generations. <laughs> um, but there is a petition that was written by a student. Um, I was hoping we could vote to like support it as a group, but obviously we can't because we don't have a quorum. But um, we can send it to everybody. And if you choose to do it on your own, you can choose to do it on your own. Um, I believe there's like 225 signatures from various people so yeah and there's also a link a, a school committee link um, that you can write something to to support yeah. and also you can call in to them um because tomorrow that will be key right it was great to have the outpouring yesterday but tomorrow will also be key for for showing in person or sending messages or emailing the the school committee just so that they understand that just because they said that okay we're gonna pause and think about it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna vote to, to reject the budget and do something different so you know we still need to continue with the pressure um tomorrow so tomorrow anyone that can attend tomorrow high school library 6 30 or phone in call in and you know or or join in through zoom so that you can see what's going on Um, so the last thing that we're going to address tonight is the civil, the idea of civil rights complaints and having some sort of body to address those. Um, and again, this was brought up at our forum, which seems like it was forever ago now. Um, and now I can't find the email that Pamela had sent me. Did she send that to all of us or was it just Yeah, she did, but I haven't I haven't looked at it. And I think, you know, I think we just want to introduce the topic. We don't necessarily have to discuss it today. Uh -huh. I think we do need to look at Pamela's email and kind of think about it. But what we what we want to introduce so that, you know, we can think about it and anyone who's listening in can think about it and can send us any feedback that they want to send us about on this is is like Allegra said, it was a um, community constituent who shared this with us um in in the forum and really brought to light the fact that, you know, there really isn't a body right now within the, the town that can really um, look at uh, civil rights complaints that um, communities have, right? Um, you know, when we think about the July um, um, 4th um, situation with the young people, uh, there really wasn't a body to really be able to kind of investigate, look at, and it would be something separate from the um, you know resident oversight board, which would be focusing on the police. Um, this would be you know a body looking at civil rights. But I don't think we need to create 
anything new. And I think that's what Pamela might be leading mm -hmm. to, that maybe HRC is going to have that, that power. Because right now, currently, as HRC and, and their kind of bylaws and, and what have you is stating, they don't have that power to investigate um, complaints and make recommendations for, um, you know, solution and addressing and, and possibly even discipline, right? Because there might be discipline recommendations that need to be made. So if HRC, let's say, does not, will not end up getting that power, then what Allegra and I have been talking about, and it's, this was also provided to us from, um, you know, like Ms. Pat Onanibaku, who was part of CSSJC before, and others who have said that we could take on that, that challenge too, to, to be a, that body to, to look at these um, civil rights claims. It doesn't necessarily mean that we need to investigate them, but we can outsource the investigation or whatever. We can create create the the whatever kind of um, process we need to create for it, but it, there needs to be a body <laughs> to really look at civil rights complaints because you know we hear that feedback all the time in terms of community members really needing a place to come forward and, and file these types of claims. Um, because nothing gets done, you know, within the town if there isn't a body that's going to be dedicated to looking at that. So, I, I agree that um, it, it makes sense to have um, a body that's specific to that. But thinking about the structure of this committee and um, our meetings, I, I am concerned that there would be a conflict if it was here. Because if we took that on, then whatever we decide based on our charge would be binding. And based on what we do now in the current structure, we're more community friendly. We, we're, we're, we are, um, we're a voice for the community. And I think the civil rights complaint um, division or whatever it ends up to be has to be neutral. And because what we do now is we advocate for um, our community and for the people who cannot. And some of those people might be the ones who come before civil rights complaint to complain about certain things. And I, th and I don't think we can be able to do that because again, um, neutrality would have to be there when we issue like a binding decision based on facts and evidence that we've reviewed and gathered. So, mm -hmm. I think we should think about that as well. Yeah, I mean, you bring you bring up a good point because, yeah, I mean, of course, investigations need to be, you know, um, uh, neutral and uh, objective, and obviously follow processes. You know, I mean, that's my area of expertise. That's what I've done for more years than I can count, and I don't want to date myself, but <laughs> it's been at this point a very long time that I've done investigations into civil rights claims and, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I hear you. It doesn't necessarily mean that we need to do that, but it, it could be that we oversee or make sure that those civil rights claims get investigated or what have you. I just think that there needs to be some some a, a body or, or someone that that kind of makes sure that the community has a place that they can file these these civil rights claims, you know, to to, you know, within the town that will actually get some type of resolution and address it. Maybe HRC will be getting that and we need to kind of look at that more closely because that would be great. Um, but that needs to happen. May I ask this question in terms of the resident oversight board? And I know resident oversight board, we, we're thinking, you know, oversight for the police, but um, why can't it be both? I mean, I imagine any resident oversight board for it to be effective has to have subpoena powers and have to be able to issue those kind of decisions. So why, why can it be both? Um, if they're really going to have that charge, um, it seems if it's going to be, you know, within their wheelhouse to say, um, okay, here's a, here's a board that has these powers, that does these kinds of investigations, let's add civil rights to that charge as well. Um, that way, again, I imagine HRC does something similar to what we do in terms of advocating for the community. 
and the resident oversight board is not going to be that. Um, I mean, we as a committee um, can say to our community, um, you know, here is a resident oversight board. Um, there is some validity to your claim of civil rights abuse and violation. Take it there. That's part of our advocacy for our community. Um, so is, is, is there some concern as to why they could not do both the resident oversight board? I see Jennifer has her hand up. So maybe there's some, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I just, I think one of the hardest problems about having a town board do anything that has to do with people coming who might want to stay confidential out confidential is how are they going to relay the information to you or how do you come up with a resolution because or it's, how does one group decide okay this is something we're going to take on without doing that in a public meeting i mean so, that is one of the hardest parts for the hrc that's why the there's the complaint process through the hrc director and that's a very good point um, but in previous lives, like think about large corporations with um, big HR departments where like if you have um, compliance violations, you can report those compliance violations anonymously and confidentially. But there also has been understanding that if it gets reported to Civil Rights Complaint Board and they find that there is something there to be investigated. Um, it is going to become public unless the person reporting it decides to say, you know what, I do not want it to be public. They have to make, it's going to be difficult, but they have to make that choice to either withdraw the complaint or have it be investigated. And for transparency purposes, it is going to be, it's going to be public and they should be made aware of that before we do anything that puts them in fear or you know, makes them uncomfortable. And I would, I would just say that we have had some people just in response to the process that we go through shy away from that because they're scared. I mean, these are people who are not, um, they're not residents or they're not, they don't have U.S. citizenship, right? And they're trying to there's something about their employer that's wrong and they need to find an avenue to complain about it. So I'm just saying like, you should really kind of think about how you're going to flush that out because sometimes people get really, really sensitive to that when it comes to it being in a broader picture. That's all. I'm just one more thing to think about. No, that makes sense. And those are very valid concerns. I, I have an idea with clients who are not permanent residents who are in the shadows and also deal with people that are juveniles. And what the Commonwealth does for juveniles is quite frankly, um, they're not known to people. They're, so there are ways to do this without exposing people to um, potential more detrimental consequences. And I think that's something that should be sparsed out to make sure that um, these people are actually protected and they feel safe making these complaints, knowing that it is going to be investigated. Their voices are going to be heard. Um, and at the same time, they don't have to worry that there'll be retribution from shitty employers or other people. So there are ways we can do that. I think we just have to sit down, talk about it, and figure it out. But at the same time, um, as an attorney, and the right to face your accuser is big in, well, in that. So we have to balance that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that those are some of the things that we thought about through resident oversight board and we're, we are going to have to figure that out. You see what I'm saying? And for me too, obviously being from that investigative background, civil rights investigative background, that is important, right? To be yeah. able to, you know, know who, um, you know, accuse you, and, but to have a process, right? To have a process so that you're, uh, you know, very clear around non-retaliation and, and, you know, those types of things so that you are monitoring that to be able to, to assure the person or at least make the person as comfortable as possible. Because obviously with any situation, any process, there's not gonna be full comfortability or guarantee, yeah. right? 
But all you can do is kind of have those processes in place and those things in place to give that person as fair a shake as possible. But yeah, but there they should be a fair shake, as you were saying, Avril, you know, that kind of like, you know, objective, you know, impartial process so that you give both parties, you know, a fair shake in regards to it. And the, the accused should have an opportunity to know who, who's accusing them, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and and what happens like even in the you know, sexual harassment, sexual misconduct realm is that. So let's say if someone, a complainant doesn't want to be the person to complain, like be the face of the complainant, you can have, so we could have, you know, someone else who's kind of like, let's, so let's say it's a resident oversight board, you can have the resident oversight board chair bring forth the complaint, complaint. However, the person who was the target would still be named, right? But they wouldn't be the ones to kind of bring forth the complaint. They would, they would be more as a witness, but at least the person would know, okay, what's the allegations being brought against them, right? So there's ways to kind of like lessen the kind of target um, potential to it, but yet the person still knows what the allegations are that are being brought against them and who brought them. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so, so, but Avril, you bring up some good points and I think that's why we wanted to have this discussion, right? Because we need to think about what's the, all the possibilities around the resident oversight board kind of taking this on my only fear around it and i think we need to discuss it more and i know again to 922 and i'm getting exhausted everyone's exhausted i think we need to just put it back on when we have you know a, a full quorum is the fact that you know how it's been just to get it to this point right and supposedly it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna happen by june 30th so if we tack this on you know will this be another reason to be like oh we got to wait we got to pause and blah 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 blah. you know what i'm saying so i don't know i don't know what the question is but you do bring up the point you know in terms of like what our mission is and what our focus is and what hrc's focus is so on and so forth but the bottom line is though we do need to figure out because we do need that is a gap within the town right now um not having a space or a place to bring forward these civil rights complaints so that you know, there they can be some a place for them to, to be brought forward and to have a process in place to, to deal with them impartially and then hopefully address them, bring them to full resolution and some recommendations for, you know, even a possible discipline or resolution solution. And, and just for clarity, my, my, my preference for the Resident Oversight Board is that it's taken so long to get here, to get one and if we're actually going to get one, then rather than having this much resistance again on this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if there's a, if they're empowered and mandated with, you know, actual investigatory subpoena powers and they can do things, then it may be easier to say, if you're already empowered to do these things, just add this other thing to it. So yeah. 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 That could be the way to go. So yeah. I bring up some valid points, definitely. Yeah. Because they do, they would have the, you know, that structure. That's how we yeah. envisioned it at CSWG and kind of talk about that whole process. So mm -hmm. all right. All right, we have time for one more public comment if it's there to be made. <laughs> all right, Miss Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Ms. Pat, I think you can, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Can people hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Good evening, everyone. Long meeting. Um, very helpful. A lot of information you guys shared. Um, I have a couple of comments. Let me start with the last topic that you guys discussed regarding where to take uh, civil complaints to. This is just my uh, suggestion. Um, I think this year there is a charter review. This is a time to, to, you know, contact the committee that is working on the charter to include a language that will give CSSJC, HRC, um, Resident Oversight Board, the power to make decision. And also, throughout the night, two themes, you know, keep coming up for me. And that was um, resistance, resistance, resistance about different things. 
And to me, the way where my brain works is, you know, uh, rules of engagement need to change. People of color, we need to start making our own rules as well, because rules has, ha have always been from top down. It needs to change. And so, for example, with the uh, civil right complaint, that power needs to be written in the charter because that's what powerful people do. They create this charter and said, we can't change it. This is the way it's going to be. No, it needs to be changed. So that's one thing, you know, uh, to bear in mind. I also want to um, commend Deb, Allegra, and so many people who rallied yesterday and spoke so powerfully at the school committee. And as I was listening, and again, the issue of resistance is some, it's more like, we have to pass this budget by that, that, that date. To me, as I was watching, it was like, why not talk about the highest paid people in our town? Let them take off $10,000, $20,000 from their salary. People who are making more than $100,000 in our town. The town manager, the assistant manager, the superintendent. Take money away from them. It's called changing the rules of engagement. Why should the cut come from vulnerable um, people of color and students? Programming that will benefit the people who need it the most. Why, why, why should the cut come from there? Why don't we take money, you know, for people who are making too much already? Why are we spending money on dog park? Why are we spending money on renovating the front of uh, the town hall? Why are we focusing on uh, building mega library and, and yet we can't find $1 million? to fully fund our school, I don't get that. So we we, we need to, to continue to push. We want our leaders to uh, um, reduce their salary and make up the gap. Um, thank you, Deb, for mentioning BBAA uh, with the league. Um, I just want to say the, uh, our young, BBA members did that. Uh, Monica P uh, Cage, Alicia Brand, and um, Baba Tude Ajao. Um, I really appreciate them, you know, for making the presentation. Uh, and this reminds me, um, on Monday, March 18th, uh, the town manager will be presenting the upper funds distribution, uh, 4.9 million left uh, today. My group BBAA we submitted uh, a request for upper funds, and part of the request we are making is that we're prepared to provide some youth programming that the town has not been able to do. To do, so um, I want to use this um, platform to encourage residents of Amherst to come out in full force on Monday, because we also requested direct payment to low income residents in our town, including seniors, a black, a black uh, resident, black businesses. I think the rest of the money should prioritize people instead of buildings and roads. And um, so, you know, spread the word for us. We want people to come out and support BBAA in what we are requesting for. We want to have this upper funds to address the harm that was done to marginalized group in our town. The three people who were implicated from the first round of upper funds, the town finance director, um, Sean Magano resigned. The uh, <clears throat> business improvement district director, 
uh, uh, Gold resigned. The Chamber of Commerce director resigned. Three of them without even acknowledging what they did with by not providing any funding to existing black businesses. So this time we want to change the rule of engagement. The resident needs to um, be the lead of how the rest of the money needs to, to be spent. To have $300,000 given to Drake, whose building is owned by one of the richest uh, land developer in our town, it just doesn't make sense. So we need to start changing rules of engagement in our town. There is strength in number. I would like to see as many people as we can on Monday. Let's fill the town hall and demand for the upper funds to be distributed equitably. And let's see, I have a quick announcement. I was told today that 80 acres is starting an exciting uh, program called Mom Squad, and they're looking for volunteers. And basically the program is to help you know, families with chores like helping people with grocery shopping or child care or you know driving people to appointments. I thought that's a very great idea. So um I got the application form. I'm happy to email it to people. I'm going to be, you know, spreading the word in among my network. People I, th I think that's what we need in this town. So I'm excited for, for this program. And lastly, and I will shut up, is uh, <clears throat> I just want to remind you guys, um, this the SSJC group, that um, when we talked about uh, leadership in Crest, if the town decides to you know, hire assistant director, it has to be a person of color. Just as how CSS, CSWG fought to recommend people of color to head DEI. So we have Ms. Pamela Young and we have uh, uh, Ms. Moisten. So if we're going to have an assistant press director, it has to be a person of color. We were very clear that those, these two departments has to be led by people of color, period. I just wanted to say that. And I just want to appreciate, you know, uh, Ms. Pamela, Jennifer Moisten, uh, Mr. Nelson, you know, um, for, you know, taking on extra work. I may not agree with everything that was said tonight, but I get it. It's extra work, but it is what it is. And I'll shut up. And thank you all for your time so much. I'm enjoying you, Emirad. You know, I hope to meet you someday. Thank you, Allegra, for your leadership. Thank you, Deborah, for your leadership. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see. Excuse me. Oh my God. Um, you okay? I'm okay, I think. Um I can I, I'm gonna is it okay if I stop recording? Yes. Because I have to make like a, we, should we do like should we adjourn then? You don't have a quorum. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even, I mean, like, I didn't have to take minutes, but I figured it'd take minutes. So April 10th, 